Hey, hello, hello. So I'm starting an ultralight live build. Uh, one of the users from the one of the uh, people in the community, uh, Darkside Tripper, had asked if I would uh, show how I built my latest ultralight. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm just still setting up the uh, stream here. So bear with me for un momento por favor as I set that up. I just want to put in an announcement so those who are interested can come and join. So uh, one of the things that's, you know, more challenging in game is making some small things. Often the smaller things are quite challenging. And so, you know, you have to hide a bunch of stuff. It's tough to fit all the microcontrollers in there. And so one of the big challenges with this is I did not want to add any sort of gyro whatsoever. And so uh, that was something I had to do. So in order to not have a gyro, you really need the build to be stable or else it's just not going to work. So I'm just still finishing up getting uh, everything set up so that I can put up some announcements here in case some people want to watch. And we will get uh, going in a moment here. So I'm just currently making sure I get everything set up correctly here so that we can get getting... All right, so I think everything is uh, set, so let's get moving here. Hello, hello, how are you, how are you, Jason? All right, so we'll go to my test world. Uh, part of the reason I'm doing this right now, too, is the latest update there. Uh, I'm going to probably need to start a new world for a couple of reasons. If you've been watching the Career Build Series, last episode of the Career Build Series, went to Clark with the Ultralight and tried to do a mission. There has been a known bug that the collision mask for the runway taxiway pretty much all of that asphalt area is missing at clark so you'll go through and that is for older saves newer saves do not have that issue so you know the devs have pretty much said they're not going to fix it and just start a new game essentially yes <laughs> exactly and so that's what the bug tracker official bug tracker said was that um you know they're not going to fix it. They that a new game. And so, for example, this is my say This is my test world. So really quick, if we go my test world, and we go to Clark. This is a more recent save than my career build series save. And as you can see, we're standing here on it. The career build series saves a little bit older. So I'm gonna have to start a new save. That's kind of. It's not a huge amount of work. The only thing that adds a ton of work for me is I have an oil. Uh, an oil rig drilled. So I need to re-drill an oil rig. Uh, I'm going to probably give myself a bunch of cash uh, as, as kind of uh, recompense because I have like literally probably a million, million, I almost said rubles. I've been playing too much Tarkov. A million rubles, in, more than a million rubles, probably 10 million rubles sitting in this uh, oil rig here. I didn't move any of it, so I'm not going to give myself all that, but I might give myself 100,000 or something. Start a new world, uh, kind of for my pain and suffering of having to redrill the hole. It's not all that much time, but it'll take a little bit of time to redrill it. And that will also allow us to get into the new oil content. And so uh, that's what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to go ahead over here and actually, I don't want to be a Clark. I tend to kind of default to FJ. So let's go to FJ and we'll start building this ultralight here. Just continually moving my... I have like 9,000 windows open at all times. I need like 20 monitors. I only have three at the moment. All right, so let's go. Let's uh, look at the ultralight. We'll take it for a quick flight. As you can see, we've got a ton of stuff here. I'm also starting a new series of... It's going to be a playlist. And it's... So I see constantly people on Reddit, di uh, all the dis different discussion forums, having issues with building hulls. And so one thing I thought would be kind of a cool thing, especially for newer players who are struggling a little bit, um, I'm going to make a hull per video. And this is pretty much all it's going to be, a hull. And if you look in here, you have two propellers and you have some rudders. That's it. And this will be released to the workshop and the video at the time of the video. And it'll help people try to, you know, get building some hulls and release a bunch of different hulls. And people can do whatever they like with them. So that's uh, one of the things I've been working on. So here's the ultralight. And so when you're building something small, there are a lot of issues with it. You know, if you think about it, your, your mass often gives you stability because... 
you know, if you imagine if you're trying to lift a heavier weight, it's going to take more effort to move it. That gives you some stability. If it's light, a little bit of wind is going to blow it around, all these things. So, you know, often a heavier craft. And so small craft can be very challenging because of the, you know, everything has to be compact. You can't have too many microcontrollers. For example, I'm actually hiding a couple. If we go in here, uh, let's do it. We'll do symmetry here. If we look here. You can see that's an XML block. So I actually have a couple microcontrollers in the booms, and that is hiding the microcontrollers right there. So we might build the ultralight a little bit different. I don't know. Um, just to, you know, it's going to be the same concept. But so let's go over kind of how this works. So pretty simple. You know, I started with a proof of concept, getting this up to where I knew it was going to operate, and then I kind of improved upon it from there. But it has a really pretty simple two-cylinder modular engine and this actually performs really well this goes about 142 knots the amount of fuel in this is two of these small tanks so each of these has 31 liters so we're talking a total max total of 61 liters plus whatever is in the pipe and that's how much fuel we have on board and with that tiny bit of fuel i can go from uh where's military military is right there so i can go from military down to here, uh, where, military down to here, back to military, and I think probably about one more time. So I can do that distance, which is quite considerable. That is probably up to about there with one tank of fuel. And so that's uh, that's pretty pretty good with this. The other thing that's often challenging is because we have, you know, we have uh, ample number of large parts, but we don't have enough small parts in game. One of the, it's not really a trick. It, it it makes sense how it works. One thing we don't have in game that, you know, often, especially a craft like this would rely on is air cooling. And so we can air cool. And so what happens here is if you look, you have the scoop. Uh, let me quickly change a setting on here. I, I made it so you can't see my cursor so let me put my cursor back up there we go uh, i don't know if it's going to do it let me give me one sec i'm just going to change it and see if it will behave itself now and come up with a cursor maybe not i think the setting might need a save and uh obs to make it work so i might not show the cursor but if you look at up there just okay so if you look at the scoop here when you get moving it will flow through the scoop and that's how you can for example do uh, if you have AFR set up on your engines, you can also use the scoops to make yourself go faster because you're able to pack more air in. And so this also works with cooling, is as you move forward, the airflow going into the scoop will cause positive pressure. It'll give you a positive liters per second. And I've tested this before. I've essentially put it a, a, uh, a train with a rocket on it, and it was sitting on the train tracks. And you have it go forward, and you'll notice that the this starts having a positive leadage per second. So this can be used for cooling. So the way we're cooling here is we have one of these uh, these belt-driven pumps. Uh, you, sometimes you need a tank. If you look here, we have a tank. This is a tank full of water. As you can see, fresh water. Sometimes you need that, especially for very small engines. You're going to need to add a tank to give yourself enough liquid. As you go with a bigger engine, as you go with bigger componentry, sometimes it will spawn with enough uh, liquid. You don't need it. So in this application, I end up overheating. Uh, I did a test, realized that I was not getting sustained uh, water flow through here, and so I end up needing a tank. So sometimes you do need to add a tank, especially with small builds. So this will pump water through, up through the pump, through the uh, cooling manifold. It will go through the water side of the, this is an air to liquid heat exchanger. It will go through there, and that will cycle your hot water from your engine and bring back cold water and cool. Then what happens is the airflow comes through here when you're moving. It passes through the jacket, cooling the water, and then it just exhausts straight out. So pretty simple there. Uh, this has a simple gearbox, 3 to 1 gear ratio there. Uh, don't have any supercharging on this. Don't really need it. I'm, getting, I'm doing 142 knots with an ultralight. I actually, at first, I didn't have a windshield on there, but I'm like, if I'm going 142 knots, I want a windshield. So I put that on there. 
So it has pretty good performance. There is no gyro to speak of. And so when you don't have a gyro, you really need your factors, your um, aerodynamic factors to line up or else it's going to be nigh uncontrollable. And so, for example, you'll notice the center of gravity here is right behind the wing. These control surfaces are actually giving us probably most of our lift. These are wing segments. I almost never use wing segments. One of the reasons I use them here is just because of the size of this. I wanted it to be nice and light. If we look at the total mass, it's 406 total mass. So lighter it is, we can, you know, we're going to have a small motor, so I need that. The other thing you'll notice here is, as you can see, the center of gravity is below the center of thrust. So, for example, a game like uh, Kerbal, you would get a center of thrust uh, icon. So essentially, the center of thrust icon in Kerbal would look, I'm trying to just make one here. So your center of thrust icon, uh, I'm going to not drag right. So your center of thrust icon would look essentially like that. Let's say the green block would be your center of thrust. So if we we're in a game like Kerbal that shows your center of thrust, that would be what it would look like. So ideally what you want to do is you would want to match up the pink block with the green block. Uh, they don't necessarily... They, they actually, you actually want the green block behind the center of gravity. You know, that is uh, ideally the way you'd want it. So you would want this pink block up here and you'd want it in line. When it is not in line, what they do in real life is they actually tilt the engine of the airplane. And so the airplane is actually tilted up, or the engine is actually tilted up a little bit. And so what that is doing is that is overcoming it. Because if you think about it, if your center of thrust is above your center of gravity, this is going to push your nose down. And so it's going to push your nose down, push your nose down, push your nose down. And so like I said, in real life, what they do is they would tilt the engine. So they tilt this propeller down a little bit and they tilt the engine up. Well, we could do that with pivots, but it's not the best idea. It's putting it on a sub body. It's doing all that. What we can do instead, though, is we can add pitch. And what that does is that effectively tilts the engine. So what you do is you test that out and you look and where are we at here? Constant number pitch right there. So I tested it out and at a negative 0.15, that is pitching it so it's as though the engine was gently pointed up. And that will overcome this. And so what that will do is that will drag the center of thrust down. So by putting that little bit of pitch in there, our center of thrust is now in, in line with our center of gravity. And so we want our center of lift. Again, center of lift is not really shown in game. It is in a game like Kerbal. So let's say our center of lift is going to be blue. And so our center of lift would be about our wing, you know, so it would be like in here. And so it would be here, but the wing itself gives lift. But your horizontal stabilizer back here, essentially these elevators, these are full moving ele elevators, they would also be, they're also creating lift. So you have lift off the wing, but you also have these tiny little control surfaces back here giving you lift. So what it effectively does is it will put your center of lift back Probably not that far, maybe a block, maybe two blocks, so probably right under the propeller. And so if you can get your center of lift generally above and in line with your center of gravity, uh, it's actually more stable if your center of gravity is below the center of lift. Think of a pendulum, right? Your center of lift, you pinch the center of lift, and the aircraft will swing and hang under center of gravity. You do it the other way, it's more likely to continue to roll on you. And so lining these forces up, especially if you're not going to have a gyro, is important. All right, so let's go ahead and get building here. And we'll start fresh. So again, the you know, one of the goals I set up for myself building this craft is light, light, light. The lighter this can be, the smaller the engine can be. Let's see if we can even get one cylinder out of this. We should have no problem. If I can get 142 knots out of that, we should have no problem. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to build up a little bit. And I started by building the modular engine. I find that to be a good way to do this. Let's try to do a, one sing, a cylinder, yeah, English language me speak, a single cylinder and see how that works. So let's go. All right, so there is the start of it. And then I want a starter. So with this one, we only have four faces here to put this on. We need exhaust, we need air, we need fuel. So three of them are already taken up. Then we need coolant. So we're going to need all four of these. So I can't block it. So we need to keep that in mind. Cannot block, cannot block, cannot block. All right. 
you know, when I that's one another reason why I put two cylinders on the uh, on the end product there was because of that. So I'm gonna do an alternator. Uh, I don't mean to click that. Let's click this. So we need an alternator, and we're gonna need a pump. The belt-driven pump is compact. Again, the point of this build is small. You know, we, you know, I don't want a three by a three by three part in there. It's just too large. All right, and let's see. So we're gonna go cooling loop on this side. So by building the engine first, it really will take care of a lot of our problems here. All right, good. So that is gonna go through, and then I'm gonna do the same thing. So I want a air. So we'll type in air, and I should get this air cooler here, air to liquid heat exchanger. And I'm just gonna stick it here. And so I'm gonna use the a pipe segment, and I wanna look at this. So fluid out, fluid in, air out, air in. So it's most likely upside down. If we look at there, fluid in. So this is fluid out. So yep, it's upside down. Cut that, JJ, and we're good. Let's merge it. All right. And so the water is, if the water is coming in here, it's going out there. And then we verify this. It's going to come out and it's going to go in. So there we go. There is our cooling. I like sticking rams on here just because the, I think they look better. So that's going to be where our air goes out. And then I need a scoop on the top. And so as we move through the air, it's going to force uh, nice cold air from the atmosphere through this heat exchanger, stripping away the heat off of the pipe, and it's going to send that hot air out, and it's going to cycle the water cooling our engine. So pretty simple there. All right, so next thing we need to do is let's imagine where our fuel tanks are going to go. So I want multiple fuel tanks, and so I kind of need to be careful with how I line this up. You know what we'll probably do? My last engine was a two-cylinder, non-supercharged. We'll supercharge this engine. I think we'll do that. So let's do modular. Let's do clutch. So we want a one-by-one one clutch. Uh, no, no flywheel. Um, a flywheel is great for cars and trucks. A flywheel is not good for airplanes. You do not want to make it too hard to change the RPS of your engine. There are too many instances where, you know, in aviation... Let's say there's an emergency, a truck drives on the runway as you're trying to land. The last thing you want is a challenge to get your engine to spin up and get you going faster. Let's say you accidentally get a little bit slow on approach. You want to be able to change your speed of your engine. A flywheel makes it so that your engine is more difficult to change speed. This is very helpful, for example, when you have a large ship. You want that to always move at the same rate because the boat drives for three days and it goes the same speed for three days constantly. Airplanes not like that. You come into land, you need to change your engine quickly. You do not want a flywheel. So let's go ahead and we're going to supercharge this one as stated. So that will go up. Uh, I could multiply it first. Let's, I don't think it really, it doesn't really matter. Let's do a gearbox. Three to one worked well. So we want to go towards the engine, which is multiplication. We'll do a three to one, max it out. And then we're going to have to put a pipe on this, if I can ever click the right orientation. All right, impeller. And so this is going to be supercharged. All right, good. So let's look. We have air out fluid in. So what we'll do is we'll even scoop this. So we'll have a scoop to give us even more power. And then I'm trying to decide the best way to set this up. So it's going to go out into the air manifold. Let's go like this. Cut this and we'll route it this way. So small builds can be challenged because you don't have a ton of space. This part of the build, we're not enclosing it, so it doesn't really matter. All right, so that's going to go forward. That's fine. And then this is going to be, we're just checking all of our, everything we need here. So I'm trying to think where I need to put. So exhaust could come up and over. So I just need to set this up correctly so that I don't run out of space. So let's go ahead and I think what we'll do here is we'll put the air here. Let's see. I'm just I'm just thinking of exhaust. That's that's one of my issues is exhaust. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll, this is where it's supercharging is becoming a pain, and that's kind of route this. All right, let's go like that. 
All right, so that's going to go like that. I wonder, I, I doubt I can cool with exhaust effectively, so we won't worry about that. Let's go ahead back to modular. We'll grab our fuel. And what I think I'll do is so uh, two tanks work pretty well. Two tanks, as you see, it gave me a lot of range, so I kind of like that um, that uh, good bit of range. So let's put a T on here because I want to have a – let's actually not T it. Let's – I really want that as the, hmm, I'm trying to think. I really want this as exhaust here, but I need to be able to put my fuel on there and not have it be a pain. That's fine. We'll do exhaust up and over. Let's do tank here. So we'll do a couple small tanks. And, you know, this is all all in service of trying to get this as small as possible. And then we'll do a prop. So I do rotor. Uh, again, we need to be able to control that pitch. So let's see. We don't want the large. Where is it? Uh, rotor and light. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go neutral blades. We're going to go down to two blades. This is a small motor. It doesn't have a ton of power. The more blades we have, the longer the blades we have, the more resistance and the harder it is going to be to spin it. We want this as small and as easy for this motor to turn as possible. So we're going two blades. We're going a uh, smaller blade length. If I wanted more efficiency, I would add more blades. That would give me a slower speed, more load in the engine, lower RPS, better fuel economy. So that would be why I would do that. And then what I'm going to do here is put in a, a downspout and a hose connector. And now we can refuel. I did refuel in the that career build series video where we use that one. All right, nice. So there's a one cylinder. It's, you know, the supercharger is taking up as much space as the second cylinder. That's one of the reasons why I had it as a dual cylinder last time. And so let's go ahead and route out a, an exhaust. All right, so I could kick it straight back. The problem is this breaks my brain. You would not want your air intakes, uh, you know, behind your uh, exhaust. It just kind of breaks my brain. But um, let's see. It doesn't really matter. Let's do this. I think this will actually look pretty cool, too. So let's go like that. Let's go cat because I don't want to be eyeballing smoke the whole time. And let's do a ram. I like using the rams as my exhaust outputs. I think they look better. So there we go. Nice compact motor. And we can cut out this little, I'll oh, leave that in there for now. We'll attach it in a second. So, of course, as you can imagine, the center of gravity is sitting right there at the, right in the middle of this whole chunk of crap. <laughs> and so uh, we're going to go ahead and work with this. So what we should do is we have to think about balancing the mass of this. I want, remember, I want my center of gravity just below, ideally, the center of lift. And so the motor is a big lump of mass. It's not a ton, but it's 49. And I'm going to add the carriage where we sit. So I'm actually going to make this a single-person one. The other one's a two-person, uh, so I could do some missions with it. And so what we'll do here is we're going to probably start st sticking some wings on here. I, I almost never use these wing segments. The reason I started using them on this one, again, was to keep that weight ultra, 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 ultra thin. And so one of the things I ended up doing was adding a bunch of mass blocks and so what we're going to do is we're going to add at least to the width of the engine, like so. And that way, if I need to add mass in there, I can. And then I'm going to go take some wig, wing segments here. And we want to make sure the arrow is up. There we go. And we'll do, double that up like so. All right, nice. So there we go. We're starting to get this uh, wing put together here. And we'll kind of leave it there for now. And you see it dragged it down, maybe a hair. All right, so now let's get the seat involved. So what I want to do is I'm just going to grab a seat. And I'll take off symmetry, stick it on the wing, and then I'll grab it. And I'm just going to put it right in the middle, smack dab in the middle. And I want to go as low or as close to this as I can get it. So right about there. You know, again, the lower I put this, it's going to drag the center of gravity down. If I put this way down here, the center of gravity would be like here, and it would be a bear because it would, the longer your lever arm, the more that thrust being above your center of gravity is going to try to push the nose down. The closer it is, the better. So put us within one block like that, and we're good. All right, and so I'll just merge this together by quickly just putting a cheater block on here, and then it will be properly piped in, but... We'll merge this up like so, and I can delete my little cheater block there. And now we have everything's of one color. 
All right, perfect. So that's looking pretty good right now. So last one I had a boom tail on. I'm trying to decide if I want to do that again. You know, I, you know, in real life, what you can do is you can put the rudder right behind the propeller. And as the propeller is spinning and putting out prop wash, it's kind of like a boat. You're able to steer your own prop wash. We don't get that in game. Uh, we need to get over a certain speed for the rudders or the control service to have effectiveness. So I probably will end up doing a twin boom design again because this is rear propeller. I could spin this round to forward propeller. Maybe I'll do that. I think I'll do that. Let's do that. I want to make this one different than the other one. So let's grab that and let's cut it. And let, oops, I screwed up there. Let's get rid of that. There we go. And yeah, let's spin this motor around. We'll do this one backwards. So that one will be like this. So I wanted a little bit ahead so that, you know, we're not eyeballing this propeller the whole time. So this is going to have a puller instead of a pusher prop. The other one, I just want them different. You know, it doesn't make sense to me to have them identical. All right. So there we go. So now this is going to have, and this will allow us to have a more conventional monotail perhaps because we had a, a twin tail in the last one. All right, nice. So as you can see, the center of gravity is nice and high. It's close to our center of thrust. Center of thrust is going to be right about there. Center of gravity is there. They're close. But as we build more down here, we're gonna it's going to move down and down and down and down. So then we're going to have to put some ballast in there. All right, perfect. So that's going pretty well here. Let's start banging some control surfaces. One of the benefits now that of going to monotail is kind of changes uh, some of the equation there. So let's do control. Somebody was asking, I think it was on the official, why I was putting so much control surfaces on there. And the main reason is I hate these little ones. These little fins, I think, are the ugliest thing ever. They just look blocky and horrendous. I would love it if they did a part that's about 50% of the size of this Johnny, but they just don't have it. And so I kind of do, you know, I kind of have to overdo it a little bit like that. So this worked well in the last one. And then let's do some wedges. Do one by fours here. All right. And so that lines that wing up. So I want these to be a little bit different than one another. And then so tail plane. I might have it come off of here and kind of make a little a little join tail. We'll see how I want to end up making this tail plane once I get to it. But looking pretty good, uh, the factors so far. And then we're going to expect we're going to put on some, some wing tips like so. So I generally put on, let's see, a couple R. Uh, no, I don't need RGBs. Let's see, indicator. So let's put a couple indicators for nav and strobes. That will be nav strobes there. And then we'll put a pyramid there. Just finish off the wingtips. All right, nice. So that will be our wingtips there. So looking pretty good here so far. I'm just looking at chat. I'm not sure about the, uh, let me let me look that up. Demacel, probably French. Is it French? Looks French. Demoiselle. Demoiselle d'Avion. <laughs> I'm trying to look it up, see what it's. Kind of. Yeah, put a link in there. I can look at it. All right, so uh, as you can see, that's center of gravity is moving back. That's fine. All right, so let's start working on the little cockpit here. And so we have to worry about this propeller now. We can't put the windshield in front of the propeller. This one is going to be a smaller motor, maybe a little bit slower. And so I might not need that. Let's actually do this. Let's make an executive decision. We'll cut the seat and we'll move it back to like that. It's probably going to be a little bit uh, less visibility, but you tend to lose your visibility with high wing anyway. It's kind of expected. You know, when I flew high wings, you know, you, you had, you can, uh, really, you had to dip your wing to be able to see where you're going. If you're going to turn, you would clear your wing so that you don't uh, hit stuff. All right, so that's back. That's pretty good there. And then uh, probably, I don't know if we'll need a windshield. Let's try some wind, some windows here. I think it's going to interfere with the propeller, which is fine. I kind of, the last one, I didn't initially want a windshield, but I put it on there because of 
I kind of put it on there because it was going 140 knots, and I was like, uh, it just broke the brain to be like, you know, you wouldn't, you know, you'd have a windshield if you're going 140 knots. You'd, you wouldn't be able to breathe. You'd need at least a uh, full face helmet, you know. I've been 120, you know, on a motorcycle or something, and that's actually all right. That fits all right. 120 on a motorcycle, you're starting to uh, str struggle to breathe. Of course, on a racetrack. All right, so that's pretty good there. So we'll start with a um, we'll start with a windshield, whether we keep it or not. We'll see. All right, good. So there goes the windshield. I kind of like it having it uh, different propeller design. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll just block out some block here, and we will start to work on our tailplane. So what I think I'm going to do here is I think one by one, one by one like that, and then we'll go ahead and we'll grab it from here. I kind of want this to look a little stringy like it's, you know, I would love to like XML some pipe, but, um, you know, could do that. But this is where I, I'm able to start hiding some microcontrollers. So I kind of have to keep that in mind of maybe hiding some micros in the tailplane. All right. So now one thing we're not going to get an indication of in game because we don't have a proper center of lift indicator is as we put our horizontal tailplane for our elevators back and down, we're dragging our center of lift down as well, which is actually not too bad. It's going to be in line with the center of uh of thrust that's going to give us a little bit more of a um that's going to give us a little less roll stability because again we don't have as much pendulous action on that and reminding me of aerodynamics class in college all right nice so now it's looking pretty good i like the silhouette of that let's go ahead and bang in some control surfaces now last time i had essentially four of these large fins. So I had four of these, right? It was a twin boom tail. There are four of these. So what we're probably going to do is let's go ahead. I'll make an executive decision, and that's probably pretty good on the tail length. Let's go ahead and grab these control surfaces, and we'll go like that. Again, I wish I could make smaller ones. I wish they had some that were like, I don't know, a little bit smaller than these. That would help. But it's a little bit better to have more control than less control, I find. And I think what we'll do is twin rudder. I think that's gonna be I think that's gonna make me a little happier to have a twin rudder on here. And the reason is I think that's just gonna work better having a twin rudder on here because I want to use fins and I need to have kind of extra control ability on there. So let's grab pyramid. And so we have to constantly think with a small build like this, where the hell am I hiding microcontrollers? Because we're going to need putting microcontrollers on this, and we need to be able to hide them. So if I do some of these, again, I like, you know, I like having some neat. So I don't want to do symmetry on this. I'm just going to have to flip it if I do that anyway. So that is twin rudders, and we're probably going to have to do quads just to have enough rudder authority. So we'll quad it up. Or I could do one and do a conventional tail. The problem is this is going to be, I think, too tall for me. It's going to look funky if I go like this. If I go like that, it looks way too tall and funky. And so by putting... I, did I offset them? They're staggered. I'm not really all that happy with them staggered. I don't, I don't know. I'm not thrilled with them staggered. Let's go ahead and de-stagger them. They do have some staggered, but I think they look better set up like that let's go all right so that is now not staggered anymore and i just did what i said i was not going to do and symmetry at the bottoms so let's get rid of symmetry on those they're probably all backwards and i'll have to fix them anyway but um i always forget where they have to be and so there's gonna have a quad rudder on there nice all right so that's set up so i think this is a neat to have it look a little bit different there and then let's see i want to put on Uh, it needs a nav light. Let's go bing bing like that. And we'll go one more indicator. You know, little details like this, adding nav lights gives it a little bit of interest to it there. 
All right, and then we want to start coming in on these. So let's go, you know, a lot of more modern aircraft, they have pretty thin tailplanes. Part of the reason was they needed cantilevers on there to be able to be strong enough. And as we got better composites and we got carbon fibers, they were able to thin them out. Like you look at a diamond and you look how thin some of the parts are. Uh, part of that is the fact that we now have some really good composite technology and we don't have to worry about them breaking as much. The problem with composite is that if it gets struck by lightning, it has a habit of exploding where aluminum just conducts it. So a nice thin kind of modern tailplane. You'll notice like if you look at reference material, I'm not thrilled on that. If you look at reference material, you'll notice like some of the modern stuff has kind of this thinner look to it than some of the older stuff. A <laughs> lot more with wings, yeah. Notice check and chat a little bit. Okay, so see we drag the center of gravity back. That's fine. As I start putting stuff under here, it's going to go now. This here is giving me some real estate. I could potentially hide some stuff, some microcontrollers. Actually, um, let me see where I'm at here. Yeah, that's fine. So a little bit different of a tail here on this one. All right, and so we'll start putting some parts in here. So let's see. So the windshield, let's move this windshield back as far as it will go. The problem is I'm going to have to probably move the seat to cut it in. So like right there is about as far back as I can go. The issue is I can't put a block there. So let's go uh, block, 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 block like that. And I'm going to have to cheat this up because I don't want to have to move the seat again. So if I just go like this, I can merge that. And now that's part again. So that just gets that windshield. And the whole reason I did that, I don't want the dash so far away from the pilot. So that's looking pretty good here. If we need to, we can actually sli uh, slide this whole section here forward. Uh, one thing you have to think of aerodynamically is, it's actually more mechanically than that, is the tail plane here. The longer the tail, one of the reasons why planes have such a long tail is the longer the arm there, think of it as a long wrench and you're trying to turn a bolt. The longer the arm of the wrench, the more torque you have to be able to turn that bolt. If I made a tiny little stubby tail and the elevators were right here, I could still pitch, but I would need massive elevators. If it's back here, I, need, I can use smaller elevators, or I can make sure I move them less, because the longer the arm, like if the tail was this long, I would barely have to move it, and it would tilt the plane. So uh, that's something to consider as well. All right, good. So I think we're making good progress on this. Let's go ahead, and I think I want to probably put a dash right about... I can't put it right there, because that will then interfere with the control column, so we'll go like so. All right, and now I can start putting some panels in. So I want symmetry off for this as well because that will just invert all my panels and it'll be a pain. I would like to be able to put the panels closer, but we can't really do it because of the uh, the yoke. All right, good. So that is set up. This is going to be a single pilot where the other one was had two people. Or the other one, one of them is a passenger. There's no controls for the other person on the other ultralight. All right, nice. So that's kind of the body there. We'll do maybe a little bit more of a sculpted nose on this one, seeing the last one didn't have a sculpted nose on it. Uh, I can't do that yet. Let me go like that, and then we'll go like so. Uh, no, we won't do that. Let's go. I don't want to do this here. Yeah, I was going to change the window windshield, but I don't think I'm going to. I think what I'll do is... I don't want to make the nose too long either. Let's just do a really flat, flat out nose there. And then, so I'm going to have a wheel in there, so we'll kind of leave it and I'll work on that in a second. But all this flat area here is helping me to hide microcontrollers. That's something I need. This gap between these wing segments, I don't actually have a gap between the wing segments. Okay. Uh, we can hide some things in here. Uh, we're running out of space to hide stuff. Back here, we can hide some stuff. So I'm just being careful with that because, for example, I need to put in linear speed, altimeter, stuff like that. All right. And so let's see. Center, I want. And then let's see. Can I put a couple? Oh, what am I? I'm deleting stuff. I hate that. Okay. Try to find. 
So it's not going to let me put that on the windshield. Look, okay, that's fine. Let's do artificial horizons. Going to go there. And then I don't need that. I need a compass. Uh, I could put the compass in the middle under the windshield, but I won't be able to see it very well. Stick it right here for now. I just like to stick north up. It will it'll turn its own, but I always like to stick north up. All right, so that's coming along pretty well here. Now we need to think of landing gear. Um, and so the landing gear need to be behind the center of gravity or we'll watch. So let's do wheels. So if you put your if you put your wheels too far aft behind the center of gravity, you're never going to be able to rotate. You want your landing gear just aft, so like right there. If they're too far forward, pretty simple, we can see what will happen. It will sit on its tail. All right. So it's going to sit on its tail if we do that. We might have to go to two rudders because of the... I think we're not going to be able to do quads. Not the end of the world. We'll do uh, dual rudders because we're going to have to be able to tip... I don't like how big this tail plane is, but it's because of these sillies. Uh, what we can do is this. Let's do this. Delete that. I'm not liking how big this tailplane is. And we'll go like this. And then I know I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to move my starboard um, aileron and invert it. And these are going to be flaps. And then I'm going to cut this tail up a little bit here. There we go. I think we'll be good with this. It was just looking too large. Again, I would love another intermediary part between that. Just that is just too large, that control surface there. That's looking better to me, especially for an ultralight. It doesn't need the biggest tail on, the, on Earth. All right, there we go. That's looking better to me. It was just, uh, it was Mondo and Normi. Let's see. That's looking a little bit sharky. That's looking better. All right, that's good. I'm liking that a little bit. That looks more cutesy and uh, not as obnoxious. I'm liking that. All right, good. So that will give us that should give us plenty of elevator control there. So I need to be able to drag the center of gravity forward. We want the wheels just aft, and so like uh, like when I did my test there, you notice how it's sitting on its tail. So we want the wheels just after the center of the gravity, and that keeps the nose from coming off. That keeps it from sitting on its tail. But we don't want it too far back. For example, you see this all the time. People will make this mistake in games. So let's throw a quick wheel on the front here just to kind of eyeball here. So let's go zing, 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 zing. And we'll just stick a quick wheel on the front. So if you notice, this is where our center of gravity is. If the wheels are in front of the center of gravity, it's going to sit on the tail. Bingo. Pretty simple. All right. Now... If you put them in an artificially too far rearward position, let's say way back here, okay? And we'll do a test here. So that, uh, symmetry. Oh, symmetry, you're the devil. Symmetry, there we go. So let's say your wheels are way the hell back here like this, okay? It, you are never going to be able to rotate this because this is your center of rotation right here. And so you want your wheels just after your center of rotation. That is where, where the wheels should be. And so I'll show you the difference. So let's go ahead and let's take those off. Let's leave them way too far back here. All right. And so I have to make them wider or else it's going to tip over here. Let's fix it. Symmetry's on. Oh, symmetry, you devil. Okay. Why is it not building? Oh, it's not in the center is why. Okay. Ugh. That would be why. Okay. That makes perfect sense now. All right. So let's just do this here really quick. Bang, 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 bang. Okay, good. So if, you're, if your wheels are too far afterward like this, we have to do it this side or they won't turn right. Let's spawn it. Uh, I still didn't make it wide. Enough. Okay, so it's sitting there. Now let's go stand on the tail. So I forget what my character weighs. I think it's like 70 kilograms or something. Now look at this. My character is on the tail. That's a nice long arm. Look at the aircraft. The aircraft is not tilting at all. So that means we're never going to be able to rotate. You see this a lot with uh, pistol vibes, yeah. The uh, You're never going to be able to rotate. And what, you, what I mean by rotation is you need to pitch your nose up to change the angle of attack of the wing, and it also will change the center of, or change the, the thrust, the, 
the direction of thrust of the propeller, and that's how you take off. You need to change your angle of attack to be able to get off the ground. And you see this with a lot of new players where they put their landing gear too far aftward, and they can never rotate. They can't get the nose up. And so you need to have these just aft of the center of gravity. And so you notice my character is standing there. Let's do a quick test here. So this was in my, I think this was in, oh, I'm pressing all the wrong buttons here. Okay, all right. So I did this in the aerodynamics tutorial. So let's quickly grab some pink and let's go weight blocks. Uh, come on, W-E-I, weight blocks. All right, so this is going to require an enormous amount of force to get this tail to come down. So we need that elevator to do all of this work. And so that's going to make it really challenging to get us off the ground. Look at that. All that weight, it still does not want the nose wheel to come off the ground. So let's let's keep playing with it and see. So we would need a ton of ton. So what's going to happen is this elevator has no prayer of getting our nose off the ground. So what is that now? Uh, look at all that weight. That's how much weight it's going to take for us to be able to tip this sucker up. It's going to take a, t a lot of weight. And so about literally a ton. It was 1,000 kilograms there. So we need all that weight. So when you're setting your landing gear, you want it just after the center of gravity. So let's go like this. Uh, let's grab them here. And let's put it just aft of the center of gravity. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to cause it so it doesn't sit on its tail, but it's also going to make it very easy for us to rotate, which is very important for us to be able to take this craft off. So let's go ahead and we'll do a test of this. So let's see if I can put my body on there and get it to drop. No problem. All right, let me step forward and I'll actually see, see how it's still tipping on the tail? Let's see how far forward I have to stand before this will tip up. Right there. So you see how by changing your landing gear position, you can make it easier or harder to rotate. That's as far aft as I can go, and that's about just after the center of gravity. And so what this does is it makes it so that you, I have more than enough elevator. I just need a, I just need 70 kilograms of force to be able to tip my uh, tail down, increasing my angle of attack, putting my wing facing higher in the air, and that will let me take off. So that's important. So we're not actually there yet, but that is a, a consideration we need to make is that that needs to go s just south. Now, that's actually not too, too bad. I like to drag this forward just a hair. And so remember, I put these up here to be able to cut into them. And so what we're going to do here is one of the reasons the last one had the color it had is this. If we take our weight block, which I hope the devs eventually fix this, if we color a weight block with this gray color, you can't see the dot. I hate the dot. And so that allows me to now put some weight in there. Now let's go back on it. So that was where we were right there. You see where the center of gravity is? It's right here. And with a little bit of mass there, it brought it, brought it both up, which we want. We want it as high as possible to try to get it in line with the center of thrust. Remember, center of thrust is just after the propeller, about probably there. We want it in line as best as we can here. So we want to start trying to stick this weight up here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to grab, oh, I don't know, all of this maybe. And we'll try to put some weight in here. And so this is going to also raise the weight up. And so if we go back, as you can see, we're dragging it forward and up closer to our engine. That's what we want to be doing there. And that's going to help us get that center of gravity up nearer to the engine. That's going to make it less likely for the propeller to push the nose down. So this is giving us good stability. Remember, we're going to have no gyro, so we have no help here. And this also lets me fix my wheels. So notice where this is now. The wheels can go right here, right on that frame line, right where I want them. So we'll just grab these and delete those. And I didn't need to do that. And I don't want suspension. I don't need it. All right. And so as you can see, now this is going to be right where we want it mass-wise. All right. And the cat is knocking down my portable hard drive. All right. So there we go. So I'm going to keep a flat floor on this. That's going to hopefully let me hide some microcontrollers in the middle. 
And so we have a little bit of space to hide some micros. I, I'm liking the footprint of this. I might move the wheel in a little bit. I had that on the other one. I thought it was kind of cool having the wheel moved in. So let's do that as well. Let's move the wheel probably to... I have my compass right there. So let's move it to about there and merge that in. So this is going to be our steering wheel there. Perfect. All right. Cut, 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 cut there. All right. So I'm digging this. I like the shape of it. Uh, this is a little bit more of a fleshed out uh, thingamajiggy. That's looking pretty good where it is. Let's just mat. Uh, let's see. Is this made it up? It is. Okay. So that's made it up. That's attached. So I can even kind of fake it here. I wish we didn't have this this um, pipe on there, but we do. Let's see. So now, as you can see, I can enclose this a little bit like so. And, uh, yeah, I'm liking that. That's kind of like the other one is. Do I want to make this ultra fat? Not really. I think that's going to look too hefty if I go around like that. So I'm kind of liking it like it is. It's a little bit square, but we'll, uh, we'll take a look at it later and see how it looks. All right, so that's going pretty well here. Let's put a couple items we know we're going to need in here. So let's see. Uh, we have fuel. Do we have fuel? Did I screw it up? All right, fuel's up here now. So I don't know how far back I can move this engine. Let's play with the engine a little bit. I think I can move it back just a little bit here, I'm hoping. All right, let's see. Uh, we'll leave the propeller. That will uh, we'll move that separately. All right, so we should be able to move the whole engine here. Do I have everything? It's such a tiny engine. I need to make sure that I don't miss anything. All right, so let's cut that and move it back. And we could probably move back maybe, hopefully, two. That would be nice. Don't necessarily need to move it back, but I kind of want to. All right. And let's see if we can move the propeller back. I'm afraid it's going to hit the windshield, so... Nope, yeah, it actually fits. Look at that. Perfect. All right. So that's going to drag the center of gravity just a little bit upward, but not much, as you can see. So that's looking pretty good there. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking this. This has some good shape. Yeah, uh, I don't want my wings on a separate body, though. I actually was started making the last ultralight where you could push the wings. You know, they have some that it looks almost like a hang glider, and you actually move the wing. I tried that idea. I'm not a huge fan of having that on a separate body. The um, I kind of like having a conventional control scheme. It just it just works more reliably, I think. Let's do this. I'm not digging this windshield here. Let's go like this. I'm thinking this is going to be cooler to do it like this. Let's go. Bye bye to you, sir. And let's go. Kind of be cool having this almost like a little um, air motorcycle. Brain forgot what a window is called for a second there. Let's see. I need a one by three by three right there. Let's get rid of symmetry. I'm just going to put them up here and move them. Sometimes you're always fighting with this, trying to get it to work right, where if you just put it somewhere else and then move it with the, with the uh, selection grid, it works better. So I want this piece. I hate these, <laughs> these, uh, these diamonds, they're always, I can never figure out how to flip them right. There we go. All right, so I think I'm going to do a different designed windshield on this. I think this is going to be just a little bit cooler looking. And yeah, it's going to let me sculpt this a little bit better so that the uh, the nose of this looks a little bit cooler. Uh, down one. Yeah, I think this looks cooler like this. Oh, you're going to cause me problems, aren't you? Suck. All right, go right there like so. That's fine. Okay, good. I got rid of the propeller on that one, too. Let's see, what caused that? Let's see, where are we at? Uh, this one. Doesn't like it there. Hmm. <laughs> Why don't you like that? Just the collision is different, I think, on that window frame. Let's see if I can build it in here. Maybe I can get it in there with... Let's see. So it's the definitely the diamonds are not behaving themselves here. Let's see. Let's 
So next one up, I think. I don't know why this is misbehaving. See, that doesn't like where the seat is. Well, that's too bad. I wanted to put on a different windshield. Hmm. Yeah, it's not going to like that, so. Oh, well. I'm going to have to leave that kind of boring windshield, but we'll figure it out later. I'm not going to play with that too much. All right, so let's go ahead and... This actually would probably have a reasonably flat wing. You would you would have a lot of extra camber on this wing probably for uh, mass reasons. All right, let's see where we're at here, and we'll work with some of this design later. All right, so let's get actually moving on uh, working this out. And so if we look at the basics of kind of our aer aerodynamic formula here and our mechanical formula here, if we look, center of gravity is there. Center of lift is higher. Because of this, we know that this is going to try to pull the nose down. So I need to pitch the engine up. And so I'm just going to do a constant number. And we're going to do, I want to get the testing ASAP. So we're going to go ahead and plug this in. Let's go ahead to pitch. And I want to put in, let's say, a, uh, let's try a point two. Hopefully we can also use that for collective. That will just save us a block. It's not the end of the world. A point two for that. And then let's see which direction this is pitching. So if we look at this, it's pitching up. So that means it can be a positive number. Okay, good. If it was a negative number, I just flip this over so this arrow is pointing down, and then we could use the same block. So that will save me a block. All right, we can use the tail and put in an XML piece to hide some micros in there. So let's get working on micros. If I can make them pretty much long and thin, that's going to make it easier to hide. So let's go Zang. Engine, all right, logic, deposit, seat. Seat's going to control most of stuff, and the panel is going to as well. Uh, let's do this. Let's make the seat control everything, and the panel... Yeah, let's do this. Let's have the seat control everything, and the panel will report everything. The panel will just show it. That way, it's going to save us some blockage, some uh, nodes. And if we need more nodes later, we can. Uh, I can do a bunch of pass-through panels. All right, uh, because we, you know, we only have one seat on this, so that will be seat and panel. I will release this when I'm done, too. All right, so we need uh, number, input will be RPS, number, output will be uh, fuel. One of the benefits of the other design I had was the twin boom. It was great for hiding stuff, so um, I have some tricks. We can hide some stuff in here. I just going to have to work on it. Let's see. Uh, fuel, I usually do air first. Air. Do things out of order. My brain has problems. All right. Uh, air, fuel, clutch. I'm going to do with a constant number. It's going to be constantly clutched. We're not putting clutch in here. Starter, I'm going to put on the seat. That's, yeah, starter will be on the seat. So I don't need that. Uh, I have, do I have engine? Not yet. Okay. So we, we have to, we're supercharging this. So that's going to be, need that. So. That's panel. Okay. All right, and that should work. All right, so let's start banging the sucker together here. And so one of the things I started doing, which I recommend, is so right there is where we're spawning. I do a property text, and I just write spawn there. And that way I know where they are. Is the worst thing is like especially some of my old builds like my microcontroller's huge and it takes up all this area and you can't find where your new node spawned. This one will spawn right here, and it makes it easy to find new nodes. All right, so seat. Uh, let's go through. Let's go read number. Bang. Uh, read number two is W S W. Nope. I want read number four. Four is going to be our throttle. That's how I do it. Up down is throttle. All right, that's good. Engine, you can go live with that stuff for now. RPS, you can live with that stuff for now. Zing, zang. All right, good. Next thing we want to do is, so this is going to be four. This goes to an up-down counter. This allows me to change the speed of my throttle. Uh, point zero zero one is generally what I use. Zero to one. Uh, we can do that. We can do an up-down counter, or we can do, yeah, it's going to be sticky. Actually, let's, uh, we don't need an up-down counter. Let's do this. Let's do a formula. So we'll do, let's do, uh, why did I go in here? I don't even know. Okay, let's go formula. What is going on here? There we go. 
And let's do this. Let's go in here. So uh, the up down goes from negative one to one. So we'll do one. So it'll be clamp. Um, I doesn't need to have the bracket X times. Let's say 30 RPS max for now. I have no problem cooling the other one with 30 RPS. Uh, we need to set an idle. Let's set the idle around 5 for now. If we can make it smaller, we will. That's 5 RPS. And then let's make the maximum 30 be the same as this here. So actually, if that's going to be the same, let's do this. Uh, let's actually, yeah, let's do that. Um, I'm going to make it more complicated. So it'll be um, X times... Y, Y, and then this will be Z. And so that's going to allow me to set my idle and set my, my maximum. So let's do property numbers. All right, so this one here will be the uh, max RP, RPS, max RPS, max RPS plugs in there. And this is going to be idle. Idle is going to be 5 RPS. And this will allow me to change it. So if you're not familiar with property uh, boxes, what that allows you to do is if we go like this. So let's say I need to change my idle. I keep stalling the engine out when I'm sitting on the ground. It's too low of an idle. I click here and I can quickly change my idle to, say, 6. Or I can change it to 3. Or I can change it to 5. And then max, I can change to 30. I don't have to go back all the way in and find it. So if I'm doing testing and tweaking, I can just do that. So that's what that is. So what's going to happen here is uh, up down is going to be sticky. So it's going to go from 0 to 1. And it's going to go 1 times 30. And that's going to give me my maximum RPS I desire, which is 30 RPS. The clamp is going to tell me what my minimum value is. My minimum is 5. So it's going to say, hey, he wants, let me go like that. There we go. So that's finished. So it's going to say, hey, he wants, let's say I hold my, my up arrow all the way down. It's going to be sticky. It's saying, hey, he wants 30 RPS. And his maximum is 30 RPS. And then it's going to go to the PID. And the PID's going to say, okay, he's at 15 RPS. I need to go up and give him more, all right? And then I could set my idle. So let's say I bring my down arrow all the way down, and it's it's going to say, hey, man, um, you know what? Actually, I want to do this a little bit differently. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I kind of want to do this a little bit differently. The problem with this is this, is if I go below 1, it's going to take me forever to get back. So let's, sorry, let's do this. This is why I usually do this. So let's go up, down, counter, threshold. Let's do this. So we're going to go like this. That has problems when I go below the value, when I go below 0. So if I do this, this tends to work better. So it's going to be because we can get in a dangerous situation in an airplane where I am all the way down at negative one, and it will take me double the time to get any power, and that will be dangerous. So we're going to do, um, if I set this four to, let's set it up real quick. So let's go in here, up, down, let's see, thrust. It is throttle, but I call it thrust. You know, I flew jets. Most of my flight time is in jets. Hey, how's it going? Uh, out to no money. I, I flew most of my time in jets, and we called it thrust because we're not throttling anything. You know, in this would be, you know, there's no carburetor on there. It's fuel injected. There's really no throttle in this either. But um, if you set it to reset 100%, when you press the up arrow, it will give you a 1. When you press the down arrow, it will give you a negative 1. When you let go, it will give you a 0. And so that gives me more instantaneous control, so I kind of prefer that. So let's do that. So we'll go in here and point zero zero one. Enabled, so this is going to be where we can set it in here. So let's set 5 and uh, 30. And so this is going to be a minimum value of 5 RPS, a maximum value of 30. All right. And so that's going to set our idle, and that's going to also set our maximum uh, thrust setting on our engine. Next is PID. PID is good. PID is life. PID. All right. And off the top of my head, so that's going to be our set point. Off the top of my head, I already know around where I need for the RPS. So I'm just going to set a p-value for now, and then I will change it later. So for p-value, I use another property. 
tax uh, property number. And the reason is that, again, I don't have to go back in here to reset it. So let's do a 0.15 to start with. And then when we put our ass to leather, which means we're sitting in our seat, uh, that's going to be on off 32. On off 32, me, uh, that's going to be if we're occupied. If we're sitting in our seat, it's going to power on the PID. Bingo. All right, that will power on the PID, and that will get us up and running. If I get out of my seat, we'll shut the engine off. So this is going to make it, um, let me see where we're at here. I'm just checking chat, guys. Just just checking the chat. Okay. And so that's when we put our ass to leather, that's going to give us a uh, PID turned on. All right, good. So that is good. So I'm going to build up this in a second. So let's go ahead and we will save this. Oh, don't want to save that. Actually, I just want to update it. Update. And then let's save this. So let's do uh, ultra light live build. Uh, and I'm just going to bring in the other ultralight. Stick it here for now. Bingo. So as you can see, that's a little bit smaller. Uh, it's a single person. And I'm just going to grab, where's my engine? Right here. And I'm just going to grab all this stuff here. So this is all my uh, stoichiometry stuff. So let's just grab all that. And if I go back to selection grid, you see it already has it all selected again. And we can just get rid of it. All right, good. And we'll go back in the micro here. And we'll stick it in here. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. All right. And we move this about uh, here. Uh, and it's a little offset, which is going to drive me nuts. So we'll just move it down a hair. There we go. And we want to go to the X's on this. And that's going to do the stoic for us. So it's supercharged, so I need it to be able to, it, it has a scoop on it, so the faster we move, the more power we're going to get because we can cram more air in there. The faster we turn the RPS, the more air we're going to be able to cram in there. So we need this to account for the fuel and change our fuel to give us proper AFR. Uh, temperature change, this will change for temperature as well. I'm just checking, just checking the old uh, chatteroni there. All right. Uh, engine right here. So the engine hooks up to these. Uh, these need to be changed because on the other one I had to change them through pass-throughs. So this is going to be one. One is air. I can check this on the engine node itself. Two is fuel and three is temp. So I'm glad I checked those or we'd have a problem. Okay, good. So that's hooked up. Looking pretty good there so far. I want to get a start out of the sucker. So let's move this just a little bit closer to a spawn area so I'm not having to find it. All right, so pretty quickly here, again, we press up on the up key. We're going to get an increase in throttle. It's going to then tell the PID, hey, he wants a higher uh, RPS. It's going to say, okay, we're lower. Give him, give him more throttle. It's going to come through here, and it's going to ramp up my throttle, give me more air and fuel. If I go down, it's going to go to a minimum of five. That will keep the engine running. 2,000 port oil slick. That sounds a little bit low, <laughs> but you can sell the oil. I wonder if that's what it... Can you sell the oil? You should be able to. No, I don't... I'm not kicking anybody for off-topic comments. Um, let's see. I'll keep these lines where you can see them. Since I'm going to release this in the workshop, I will leave my lines visible. This is like... this. My mind can't cope with this. Like This is how I do them in my games because I don't like my lines showing... Uh, crooked like that, so I, I'm very, very particular about all my lines. So when I try to put something in the workshop, I try to make it so you guys can see the lines, and uh, it drives me nuts when I try to do it. All right, let's see. Uh, we, we're gonna run infinite electricity on this sucker for right now. Uh, let's hook up. So let's go RPS to the crank again. Single, single. Uh, cylinder on this. So this is one of the things, uh, you know, I wanted this as mini mini as possible. And so purposefully I'm building this ultra small because I think it's more fun. All right. And then let's see where we're at here. Make sure my, okay, we're on a three to one gearbox ratio. Let's give this a spin. I try to get that engine rocking. All right. So you see our center of gravity is off just a hair. That's fine. For now, I'm just going to give it a, a nose ring and we'll fix it later. All right, that's just enough to keep it sitting properly. 
you notice how that tiny bit of weight just uh, keeps us balanced. All right, let's go ahead. My ass is in leather. Let's, uh, what do I have? I don't have a starter hooked up yet here. I need a starter. Let's see. All right, so as you can see, we're maxed out on this panel here. That's fine. And what we're going to do now is I need another blank panel. And I need to do a pass-through. So what's going to happen here is this is going to be pass-through. So this is going to be uh, engine panel 2. And I need to start this sucker out. This now is going to take in uh, composite. Imp oh, no, uh, I was going to start it from the thing. Let's just update that. I'm going to need another panel anyway. So I'm going to start it off the seat. So let's go. I forgot I said I was going to do that. And we want to go to starter right there. This is now we need to configure the seat. So up down is 100%. Six is going to be the starter. That's going to be uh, toggled to a push. And let's try a cranking. So as soon as I put ass to seat, it's going to turn the pit on, and the pit's going to set it up to try to go to 5 RPS. Now I'm going to crank. Let me make sure my volumes are up. Up oh, clutch has no um, constant number on it. Let's do that. Actually, you know what we can do? We can cheat. So see this value here? That is uh, 0.2. We can set that to the clutch as well because the clutch will only go to a 1, so it doesn't matter. So we can go overboard in the clutch. That will work. So that's another that's another space-saving thing. I don't need another node to separately control the clutch. I can use that. Oh, that is close to the windshield. <laughs> I don't like how close that is to the windshield. Let's see. Uh, I don't have exhaust on there. I always forget putting exhaust on. Did I hook the engine up? I don't think I did either. So the engine node is usually what I forget. I didn't hook any of that. I didn't hook any of this crap up. Seat data. I didn't hook anything up. Uh, not not unusual. I'll tell you that much. Let's see. That's all hooked. Okay, that's good. And then, kind of want to move the engine one forward. Let's move the engine one forward. Let's cut you. Cut forward. All right. And then let's grab all this engine stuff. I need to move this whole assembly back forward again. All right, uh, do I have everything? I believe I do, but it does, it's, looks so small, it doesn't look like I have everything, but I do. All right, there we go. All right, All right there we go. Uh, nope, I missed the exhaust. I do have exhaust on there. I just didn't hook everything up. Okay, and that will face like that. And then I need a... It doesn't matter. These rams aren't going to cause me problems, but I'll cut this and spin it around like that. All right, so that should be good now. Let's give it a crank. So I didn't have anything hooked up, so it wasn't going to get any issues. All right. let's see where we're at here. Oh, so let's see. I'm going to go ahead and come in here. I'm probably just missing something silly. Let's check everything. So fuel's going to fuel air to air. RPS is coming off RPS node. Bingo. Engine for stoic, we have that. Nice. Okay, let's make sure all this is hooked up correctly. Uh, one, one, so minimum range is 5, 32. Let's make sure 32 is seat occupied. I think it is. 32 is seat occupied, so we'll go, uh, let's see. On off 32 is occupied. That is correct. So I do have to put my ass in the seat, which isn't my favorite thing to do for this, but um, we'll do that. So I'm going to change that really quick. I'm just going to make that uh, toggle one. I'll, I'll put it back, but the issue is this, is I want to be able to get out of the seat and look at tooltips. So I need to change this to one for now to turn the pit on. Let me check everything. 0.15 should be fine. That's good. Minimum range of 5 to 30. Enable the clamp. That's good. RPS is there as our process variable. The p-value is 0.15. Uh, 1, 2, and 3. Those are all kind of correct. That's going to the X's. Air and fuel. That should be fine. 0.0101. Okay. Let's go ahead and see what's up with this. Why it's not going. I want to go 6 
to toggle so that I can check the, uh, I want to see what's up with this. Why it won't start. A bunch of my scoops are backwards too, so let's see. Uh, zero AFR, zero exhaust, stoic. What are you set to? Zero. Why is that set to zero? All right, let's, uh, one way we can figure out if this is the issue is going here. And we can go constant on. Constant on signal, we'll put that. That will permanently turn the pit on. I may not have, no, it's infinite electricity has to be on. Let's try that. The next thing to test after that is if I try to fire it up and with infinite fuel and it starts, it's one of those issues. All right, let's see where we're at here, why this is not behaving itself. Uh, pressing on that, make sure I merged it. All right, so we're getting a throttle value on that. Should be above double for air. That's correct. That's good. We have diesel. Exhaust. Exhaust 100%. 13.2 stoic. Okay, what is up with this? Why you not? Why you not work, sir? So the values are good now. Clutch pre okay, clutch pressure is is low, but that should be fine. What are you running at, guy? I need to find the crank value. The issue is I can check with the gearbox. Okay, so we're f what are you at? 0 0.32. Let me try something. Let me try to get rid of the clutch for now, and we'll set it up. It's 0.2. I thought it was 2. So get rid of that, and let's give it a crank, see if I can get the engine up and running. Cat move, cat move. Thank you. Check that engine. See if it's up and running. Not right now, Cat. Cat's trying to get involved. Okay, so the engine is running fine. So the engine's running. It's quiet. Just can't hear it. Starting to rev up here. You can see I'm going up on the revs. Let's see what it's doing now. I have to flip the scoops around, too. All right, so... Let's see what the throttles are showing. 0.94, so this is fine. Okay, so it's up and running. Exhaust is 100%. Efficiency is 97. Stoic, that, all that's good. That's running a 0.18. That's running a 0.095. Let's figure out what's up with it. So I need to just flip a couple things around while I'm here. Let's just delete these scoops and put new ones. So they just need to face this way because I flipped the engine around. I don't know what the cat's doing. He climbed up on me, and then he's falling off. Dude, make up your mind, son. All right. So that's good. Uh, let's go. I'm going to do a constant number. Get this sucker moving here. Clutch will be one. Let's bang this clutch together. Facing the engine, that's correct. Three to one, that's good. Something's up with it not wanting to ramp my thrust up properly here. Let's give it a quick check here, and we'll see what's wrong with it. It was the scoops. I think it was the scoops. I don't know, maybe not. Oh, what's that on the end? Okay, I lost a part on the end of the fuel tanks. That shouldn't run out, though. Let's quickly grab a hose. I doubt that's it, but this needs to go back on anyway. This needs to go back on there, like so. What is up with this engine now? This engine's misbehaving here. I need to put in a, a cooling loop here, too. So this here needs... That can go. This here needs... A tank. Let's just do this while we're at it here. 
because the engine is going to be too small to produce enough uh, water on its own. We need to add a little water to it. Let's see why this isn't running. This is interesting. So I'm going to, let's see, make sure this is running right. Up, down, reset 100%. So I'm trying to figure out what this problem is here. Um, let's go P value of 0.15 should be about right. Let's try a 0.1. It's running, it's just not throttling. <laughs> I don't need to put handles on it, just do this. She light. <laughs> that doesn't weigh anything. Let's see. So let's check the engine, see what's up with the engine. So engine engine's getting the values it needs. I'm checking these. 0.24, that should be, ooh, that's, see, that's running real low air volume. I don't know why. So it could, it might not like banging that impeller pump like crazy. These impeller pumps are pretty, are pretty hungry power-wise. So let's do this. Cut that, put that there. Paste, paste. Cut you, cut you here. We don't really need all that extra air anyway. So let's try this. This often works better. You know, you tend to need a pretty large engine. Remember, we're only running one cylinder here, so this very well could be the issue here I'm having. Yeah, this could be the issue here. So let's play with that. All right, let's try that. Yeah, it sounds like it fixed it. Why it's not throttling up, I don't know, though. Hmm. It's interesting. Do not know why you are misbehaving. Let's quickly check some things. Fuel, diesel, that's fine. Probably have to jump on the wing every two seconds to test it out. Okay, let's see. So, it's, see, the number, it's, the engine is literally running. It's probably not now. Probably shut down now. Yeah, just shut down. But it, you see it was running. So it was at 0.4, and that was at 0.8. That's, that looks all good. That's, uh, let's do, so I should be able to test this. I doubt it is the engine having an issue. I think it's the throttling. So let me quickly check this here. So it's probably a p-value. Let's just do this. Let's grab this. I'm going to play with p-values here. That is often the issue. Properties. Let's make this one wide. Logic p-value. Number input p-value. Each engine is different. So where are you at? Right there. Oh, I meant to keep you there. There we go. And we'll put in a p-value here. Okay. Update that. We'll do keypad. And I'll play with the p-value until I get this where I want it. Let's go ahead and plumb the p-value in there. And we'll knock in the p-value. I'm trying to get this up and running correctly. You saw, saw it was running. It just It's not throttling up. So there's something issue, an issue with the throttle. So let's go 0.1. Yeah, so it's throttling is the issue, I think. You can hear it going faster as I increase the p-value. There we go. All right, we're up and running now. P-value issue. So because of the small motor, I may not be able to multiply it as much. We have to check here. So we're up and running here. Let's see what our numbers are. So that's at 0.46. That's at 0.72. Okay, because I flipped this around too, the propeller's going to be the wrong way for the pitch. So we're rotating the propeller at 25 RPS. We've got eight out of the engine. So... We're probably overloading the engine because we only have one cylinder. So let's go down to a two to one. 
And if we can get that up to 16 RPS, we'll get an equal amount of thrust. So what do I have this as a one? It's probably, we, that number can go smaller once I get the load under control. There we go, we're up and running. So let's see where the engine's actually running now. So a single cylinder is going to be a little bit rough to get going, so it's going to take us extra time to get that running. Because it, it's just so small. And we're not getting much airflow in there because we're not moving. It's 0.43, let's see. Can't, I have to get an RPS off of the gear, so we're at 7.6 there. So let's keep going up on the thrust. So while I'm here, I want to do this. Let's go ahead in here. So smaller it is, the harder it's going to be to tune this because we don't have the help of all the other cylinders. Let's go. I need to read some info here. So number output. Um, let's see, set RPS. So I need to tune in this PID is part of it. Let's see, get that. And then I want to read what this is telling me here. All right, good there. And then I need a dial. Dial, come on, man, dial. All right, and I'll stick this right here. And we'll go ahead and we'll grab that set RPS there. So I need, need to make sure this is working properly. It looks like it is. It's just, um, again, it's a small, tiny little single engine, single cylinder. We might have to go two cylinders. I would hope not, but let's see. So let's try a 0.5 on this. Sit back in my seat, start up. All right, we're up and running. So I need to check what I'm setting here. So, okay, so this is the problem. So it's reading a 0.72. Why? Let's go up some. Hmm. Something's up with this PID. Let's see what's up. Don't know why this isn't running. It's probably it's probably might just be too small. Crankshaft going there. Okay, air, air, fuel, fuel. Let's check it out. All right, engine stoic. Might just be too small. Let's try something really quick here. Let's uh, pull this for now and do an air filter. Make sure we're not getting clogged in the impeller. I don't think so, but we'll see what's up. Not liking something. So it's having to run uh, a higher thrust because of that. Let's try something else here. Let's do this. Let's see if we can get this engine screaming. We're having an engine problem right now. So let's go ahead and find the clutch right there. Let's put a zero in on the clutch for now. I need to get this engine running before I worry about that clutch. Go back to 0.15, and then we'll start from there. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so something's up. Let me check it. I'm missing something silly that is going to drive me nuts when I find it here. Let's see where we're at here. All right, uh, 5 to 30. All right, that's fine. Let's go 0.01 here. Let's try that. That could be it there. I've done that mistake before. I made that too small. Every engine's different. You have a tiny little engine. Sometimes it behaves different. There we go. That was it. 
That was it. Okay. It was just, it was taking me forever to get my throttle up. That was what it was. So too small of a throttle multiplication on there. All right, that's good. Let's go p-value. Let's set our p-value up. Let's get this going, and we're pretty close. So I need to, we should be able to take off now. So I need to go, uh, WS is going to the elevator. AD is going to go to my ailerons. Uh, flaps, I'm not going to worry about flaps right now. We'll, we don't need to take off flaps. Up, down is fine. Left, right is going to be rudders. Let's do a quick control check, and then we'll hook the clutch back up, and I think we're good for takeoff here. So elevator moves in the correct direction. Uh, ailerons is going to move in the correct direction, like I've done this before, and rudders, as stated, is always backwards. I always screw up put the rudders in the back backwards here. So let's go cut those and invert them. All right, let's spawn that, do one more control check, and I think we're we're ready to rock and roll. So it was uh, my interval. Essentially, I was uh, giving it too little uh, throttle, too slow. There we are. We're in business now. Let's go ahead and we'll hook this clutch back up. All right, and we should be ready to rock and roll, I think, here. We'll fix the p-value in a second. So I have the p-value under here. Let's just do a... 0.15. All right, good. That's running. I need to put my gearbox back to 3 to 1. What are you setting my prop at? Prop is collective of 0.2. Let's go 0.25 on that. And then this is going to be backwards. So I need to cut this and rotate it, or else we're going to have problems with the we're going to have problems with the center of gravity. Um try to think. I need to look at this and see how. Nope, I think that was actually right. So let's go like that. I need this to pitch up. Yeah, I need this to pitch up to overcome the center of uh, thrust being above the center of gravity. That should work. Let's check it. So it looks like our blade pitch on our propeller is too low. As you can see, we're turning like crazy. I'm just not getting enough uh, rust. So that's a propeller problem. So what I'm going to do is we'll figure out what we want for a, a propeller pitch, a collective. It would be collective on a helicopter. It would be propeller pitch on a proper airplane. All right, good. Let's do that. And so we're gonna get, we're just gonna get up to max thrust, and then I'm gonna start adding some propeller in there, and that will tell us where our minimum propeller needs to be. So six. Let's go full throttle. All right, and we'll start adding in propeller pitch here. So let's see, I'm trying to see if I have the right, let me bring this back a sec. If I need to overcome that thrust over weight issue, let's see, I need to add a couple dials here to just figure this out. Right, let's go, 
RPS. I need to read my RPS. I need to see where we're getting that. That's pitch. Let's see. That's collective, and then I need to figure the pitch. So let's look at this number really quick here for pitch. 0.25 on the pitch. And so that is a positive pitch is going up. That is what we want. All right. So let's, let's, yeah, let's start with that for now. So I need to see where we're at. I need to get this p-value figured out here. So let's go to max thrust here. All right, so I'm asking 30 out of it. That's what max thrust is going to be. I think our throttle might still be too low. That's what it is. That throttle value is still too low. Yep, that's what it was. Throttle value is way too low, so I need to fix that. Let's gently add in our propeller. Oh, we're going to go flying to the moon here. So I have no clue what my speed is currently. So we're getting a good 23 RPS on there. All right, let's try something here. I'm curious if this pitch is screwing us up here, so let's take that off for now. That's good there. Okay. And I need to change this. This is screwed up in here. So right here, this should be like 0.1. Make that 10 times faster. Just the thrust is uh, is a little bit slower than I like here. Hello, Mr. G. Let's see what you say in a second here. Yes, I will use the pitch on it. I just have to get it fixed first. I'm just working with p-values too, so I gotta get that fixed. Yeah, so there's much snappier throttle now. So let's work on this p-value here. Let's try a point two. There we go, that's pretty good. Whoa! <laughs> Alright, so that's our pitch issue. Perfect, okay, so that's starting to get there. Get you. I can't remember which direction this is going to be. Let's go pitch. If this uh, tips over forward, we know it is going the wrong direction. If it tips over uh, afterward, we know it's going the right direction. Oh, I didn't put it a p-value. This is the boring part of just trying to get your engine configured. So let's try something here. All right, you are obviously too high of a number here. So let's do point two. Pitch collective is there, okay. Let's set a point two on here. So this is all trying to, I'm doing like 20 things at once, trying to get the engine tuning set up and everything else. Move 0.15. I don't have a linear speed either. I wish I put that on there too. Problem is with that one cylinder, we're going to be hard pressed to have enough power. So you see how it's tipping the nose down? That means the propeller is set the wrong direction. 
Okay, so that would be our main issue there. So that's perfect. Let's go ahead and I'm going to flip this prop. Like so, with the arrow down. I think we're good now. So let's uh let's head out. So we should be good, hopefully. That fixed that issue. So it's trying to continually push us in the wrong direction. So let's go. I want to get this p-value tuned while I'm up in the air. Let's go to like 0.25 on this here. Where are we at? There we go. Okay. Going the wrong direction again. Okay, that definitely was the right direction. Okay. Good to know. I need more. All right, that's fine. Point two. Cut you. So that was right the first time. Just testing. Testing, testing, testing. Okay, there. Hook you up to pitch. All right. Let's uh, do one more thing here. This is responding a little bit too slow for me still. Let's do, let's do like five on that. Make it five times faster so that my throttle responds a little bit quicker. This is what takes all the time to test the sucker out. Let's do like a 0.3 on there. Let's go you, uh, 0.15, probably a, yeah, let's start with 0.15. engine might be too small because I can't get the propeller any smaller. And I'm having to put in a bunch of uh, pitch, so we might need to go to a two-cylinder. Yeah, I'm thinking we're going to have to go to a two-cylinder on this to get enough power out of it, unfortunately. Let's see how fast I can get going here. Need a linear speed or else I'm not going to be able to know what my speed is here. All right, let's do this. I'm thinking we're going to need a two-cylinder. Just I'm not able to get this propeller spinning fast enough, I don't think. Let's try something else here, too. Let's do this really quick. I'm going to have to take a quick break for the bathroom here in a second. Let's go like that. Let's drag the sucker up a little bit. All right, let's do that, and then I need to, I'm going to go ahead and make an executive decision. Let's make this a two-cylinder. I really wanted this to be a one-cylinder, but I'm thinking I'm just going to need two. So let's go like this. Cut you. Cut, cut. Base, based. All right. Actually, you know what? We can keep it in the same footprint. Uh, can I? Or Close. It's close to be, me being able to keep this in the same footprint. Um, almost. It's, it's close. I can almost make this uh, two-cylinder with the same footprint. I have to put manifold pieces on there. Let's not do that. Let's go like this. Cut you, move you like so. Bing, bang. Crack shaft piece. Two-cylinder. Merge. All right. What did I break on this side? Just coolant loop. I was hoping not to have the two cylinder this, but let's start with that. Let's see if I can fix it doing that. You can hear it already spinning up faster because it has now see how the needle's dancing? That means my p value is too high, so. There we go. There we go. Alright, we're starting to move now. I think just single cylinder was just a little bit too ambitious here.
All right, so that is making some progress. All right, so see the pitch? The pitch is too high. So pitch is a little bit high. Let's see, 0.2. Let's go with a 0.2 on the prop pitch here. All right, and let's work it from here. I need a linear speed or we're never going to figure out what we're doing here. So probably need like 60 knots to take off, I'd say. But yeah, I needed the two cylinder. Just it was not powerful enough. what my speed's doing here. Stop. So 60 meet. Oh, I hit. Damn it. I hit something. All right. Let me try to figure out this prop pitch. I'm, it's it's being obnoxious. So let's do this. I'm gonna have to put this on a test rig. So put this on a quick test rig. I'm doing this backwards to my other one, so I can't just check the other one. Let's go like this. Uh, let's not do that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. I have to test this out really quick because it's just it's going to be a pain if I don't do this. All right. So this will... Right, let's put it on a quick test rig. I just want to do this and get it done with. I'm having problems figuring out the prop pitch, so this will help with that. Got to be different there, don't you? Constant on. Ah, come on. Right there. All right, so I'm just going to test the prop pitch with this. So I need to get this kind of leveled out with that. I want to set a static prop pitch to so prop pitch. Collectives there, prop pitch is there. Okay, let's get going here. Let's see if I can get in the seat without causing mass problems. Ah, missed it. All right, let's go ahead and start it up. So let's go like, I don't know, point. Let's, uh, let's keep this zeroed. I just want to get it set up so that the prop pitch is correct. So that's prop pitch on that side. So that is set uh, backwards. I'm trying to think. Just trying to trying to make shortcuts here, which are actually turning into a little bit of a longer cut here. Let's see if I can get this done quickly. All right. Ah, uh, come on, man. I just try to use the numbers from the other one, but I'm just trying to figure out which direction the prop is turning here. Let me see what I need to do here. I'm not going to do this. Let's just play with it a little bit. It's going to 
take me a while to figure this out anyways. I'm trying to get the prop pitch because I'm trying to account for that center of thrust being higher than the center of gravity. Let's do this. Um, let's go ahead and save this, and I'll check the other one. All right, so this one, the propeller is pointed down. It's behind us. So it should be backwards. So let's see what the data is reading. So if it's that's pitch there, it's coming off of this node. That's a negative 0.14. So this should be a positive, I believe, if it's in front of us. Yep, it should be a positive in front of us. All right, let's see what value are we running on this. Let's see point. Let's try a point one five. Let's connect that to the pitch. All right, and then let's try like starting this at like, I don't know, we'll just start that when we get in there. Do this really quick here. Yeah, with the steering on that, I don't want to just get in the air here and we'll probably call it there. Oh, don't tip over, you scum. So, you know, with having that pitch in there, the problem it's causing me is... Oh, my God, it's damage is on. Of course you are. The problem is having the... Um, having too much pitch in there is going to rob so much engine power that I have to be careful of that. Let's go, what, dot, dot, wheel. So I think we're starting to get close here. I need a little bit more, maybe. So point, point two. This is the stuff that's just time consuming. This is usually why I don't put this in my videos, is this is like pit tuning crap and tuning prop pitches. It takes forever. Try like a point two five, maybe. <laughs> So see, it's trying to push the nose way down. So I need to increase that prop pitch. All right, what am I running? Am I running positive or negative off that? Positive two. And I'm going to try both sides. So let's go negative, negative point two, point two. And let's do a really small number, like, I don't know, 5%. So I need to tune this. And this is the problem why it's not running right now is that... Uh, let me check my steering. I need to be able to steer out of the runway. Of course, it's backwards. Why wouldn't it be? So let's get this fixed here before I... Oh, I just deleted something random. There we go. Cut you. Cut. And we'll invert the tire. So my steering is correct now. Get rid of that if I can. All right. Uh, let's, that steering should be correct now. Let's go ahead and spawn. Let's see what I can do. All right. I need to get that pitch figured because the uh, propeller's so high. This is what's challenging is getting that just right. Let's go to like 0.2. If not, it's going to be a negative number, but I need to play with it here. Problem is I have to check this live and it's just it's tough to get it. If it's not just right, it does not want to behave. Close. Close. Real close. We use that propeller to help pick, pick the nose up. That's my speed. See, it's stealing. It's robbing a bunch of power, though. Ugh. 
Right, let's do this. This is the stuff that sucks trying to get this done right. It's so light and it has so much power. It's just being obnoxious. Let's go up to like a 10. my mind here in two seconds here go to one thank you going to lose my mind here there you go go to like 0.25 start it all right so see we need like a point two I definitely think the number is positive. Go up a little bit. 0. 0.255. Okay. We just have such a small motor. We have to be careful. We don't, you know, over restrict it. You go up to like a 0. 0.25, 0. 0.3, something like that. So we need, at this point, we just, there we go. All right. Beautiful. So you see how, you see how touchy it is. It has to be right. The numbers have to be perfect or it just won't work. And it's frustrating it's because it will rob your engine power. So there we go. We're up. Okay. So it's so much testing, man. It's just, that's the thing that's kind of boring and sucky is you have to go through there. I could have stolen the numbers from the other one, but I don't really want to. I kind of want to figure it out. All right, so you notice, so I'm going to take my hands off the controls. It's flying nicely by itself. It's going to do this stuff. This is what real airplanes do. The, the lower the center of gravity is, it will roll less on its own. I have good roll authority. I have too much roll authority. Look at that. That is too much roll authority. That's fine for like a pit uh, acrobatic plane, but it is not great for... You know our little plane here to be um, this acrobatic so what I want to do is I want to reduce the uh, sensitivity of the roll because again this is gonna have no gyro but uh, that looks pretty good so before I cry <laughs> uh, so 0.25 on the propeller 0.28 let's go up a little bit 0.3 let's see what our speed is 120 knots a little bit more maybe 130 see where we're at there that's about 142 uh, that's 140 something knots right there so that's pretty good so these are our numbers so 0 0.15 0 0.38 0 0.25 and what I want to do is I'm going to take out my trim altogether so I need to go in here and I bring my trim to zero why is my Y trim what is my Y trim oh that's throttle so Y trim comes out. Okay, so now I want to see what this does. So if I let go of the controls, it's going to pitch the nose up because of that pitch. So let's bring that down to two. I want to get that as low as possible. All I'm trying to do is cancel out the center of thrust being above the center of gravity. I don't want to. I don't want it to be excessive. So let's try 0.15, and then we just need to make sure it will take off. So this is pretty good. My hands are off. Notice we're sitting pretty level. Look at the artificial horizon. That's good. So let's try a 0.15, a 0.38. All right, so let's try that. So these are kind of our numbers. So I have a bunch of stuff to do here. Hopefully I remember all the numbers. All right, we finally got the. You notice how it's, it's like a tiny little fractions of a number can really make it work or just not work at all. So you have to keep that in mind. Uh, so right here, where's my, I don't know my p-value in here. Let's change this to a property number. Uh, where are we at here? Property number. All right, property number is going to be my p-value. So we'll type in p-value. P-value, not a p-o. Uh, 0.15 is going to be my p-value. That's going to allow, get rid of that. So that is now in there. Uh, ask to seat is going to be number 32. This can be fixed and get rid of that. That's good. All right, nice. 
Uh, set RPS I don't need right now, but that's fine. That's good. Okay, this is going to be, let's try a, we'll keep this connected there. My propeller, I'm going to go ahead with a constant number of, let's see, let's try point, uh, 0.4 maybe. 0.4 for that. Let's go, so that's going to be my collective. And then this, I'm going to still manually control this. Uh, currently, let's go zero. I want to go pretty low on this, so let's go like a, a 10%, and we're going to start it at 0.15. Let's see if we can take off with a 0.15. The lower I can get that number, the better it's going to fly in the air, but we need some help to get off the ground because we're fighting all that uh, grip of the tires. I know it sounds like we don't have any grip on the tires when we need it, but it also, we have too much of it when we don't want it. So I'm just trying to rotate, trying to get off the ground here. See, we're going more than enough. So we need more than 0.15 to take off. All right. So we're going to need more than 0.15 to take off. So we're probably going to need that two. Let's try to get it. I'm thinking we're going to need the two. So let's go to two. 0.2. Uh, nope. Max value 0.3. And then let's do a start value 0.2. So I think we need 0.2 in the pitch. Uh, we'll just end up trimming it when we get in the air, which is pretty normal. All right, so all that's overcoming is the angle of the uh, is the is the engine being so high up. And there we go, rotate, perfect. And now I need to trim a little bit. There we go. All right, so it's flying well. I didn't uh, change the sensitivity on the roll, as you see. We have an aerobatic. Ultralight. Don't crash. <laughs> I got into a death spiral. That wasn't really a death spiral, but it was close. Um, let's see. I needed some uh, rudder for a death spiral. Uh, let's see. So AD is going to go down to like 5%. WS. WS is fine. We have good pitch authority. That's all good. Let's go down here. I need to kill that trim there. All right. What are you at? You are at point. Uh, two. So point two to get off the ground. So that's fine. Let's go. So this is the kind of stuff, like I said, this takes forever just getting this set up, but I think we're there. Yeah, we're there on that. So let's go ahead and we get rid of you. Let's go for a quick flight and see how it flies. And then we'll start hiding some microcontrollers. I know a lot of people are interested in that because that's what's challenging is with a small build. All right, so now let's just do a taxi out to the runway. And so the, one of the reasons why we were just taking off like crazy and the nose was pitching down was I had it set to full throttle just to try to test taking off. Now we can kind of taxi out. You know, as soon as I get a little bit of throttle there, it's now see how the nose is going down? That's all because of the engine being so high. Now, what I could theoretically do is I could tie it into my throttle. I could make it so that the maximum value at 100% 100, at 100 throttle is going to be 0.2. And when I have zero throttle, it's going to be at zero. That's something I could do, um, potentially. So that will confuse, make it a little bit more dynamic. So it won't be pitching my nose down at all right now. No, it will be. But um, that's something I could do. So let's get out to the runway and let's take off on the runway. And so I'm going to add like point, let's say, actually I don't really need it. Let's not add a ton there. Because what happens is as soon as we hit about 60 knots, it's going to give us all that thrust. That's why we pitch up so hard is, and that's what happens in real life. Once you get enough airflow over your elevator, it's going to pick your nose up or pick your, yeah, pick your nose up. What the hell's going on here? Okay, what happened to you? Did I screw something up here? Pitch, I didn't enter in a number. I didn't enter in a number. Okay. That would be why. All right, we'll take off straight ahead. We'll just get going. I want to test the uh, how this works here. Another addition here. Let's go six. Should now be a push instead of a toggle. All right, we're ready. And we'll get in the air, and then I'll take a little break uh, just to go to the bathroom. And we'll finish up putting some microcontrollers away. And here's rotation. 
Rotation. All right, so still a little bit more aileron than I like. We actually want a little bit of extra aileron. I'll tell you why. We're going to put flaps in this. And this will allow us to get down to like 65, 70 knots. It actually works pretty realistic to how it is in real life. As you slow down, what you're going to end up with... Actually, this trim's perfect. That's perfect, dude. Okay, my hands are off the controls. I'll tell you when I put them back on. Still nothing. Still nothing. Still nothing. No hands on the controls. No hands on the controls. No hands on the controls. This is what happens to IRL in airplanes. Um, you know, you have to give them small little advancements. So all I need to really control right now is the rudder. So I'm trimmed out about perfectly. My hands are off the controls. They've been off the controls for a couple seconds. A, A, A. Tap the A key. Tap the D key. Hands off. Tap A. Tap A. Tap S, D, S, A. Hands off, hands off, hands off. So this is flying well by itself. All right, good. So let's. Uh, so this is flying really, really well. We have the numbers tuned in. We're all set to go here. So let's do this. Let's uh, get this set up to operate on its own. And let's hide some microcontrols. I know a lot of people are interested in that because it's challenging when you have a small plane to hide micros. All right, so let's get rid of any extraneous stuff I don't need. I don't need set RPS, and I don't need the p-value anymore. That allows me to shrink this panel down to a one. Oh, by deleting that, I have to reconnect it outside now, which sucks. Uh, let's see, I missed it. Uh, nope, it didn't do it. Okay, something probably maybe got disconnected. Nope, perfect. I was afraid that I was going to get disconnected. So that is six long. We need to find a six long spot in here, so... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. And then we'll make this it right here. And I'll change the dynamic of the tail a little bit. Could put it in this boom here, but I need one, two, three, four, five, six. I need at least double that length. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we're one block short of being able to stick it in the tail. And that's because I would XML a block in there. So we're going to hide this. And the floor pan, right about there. All right, so this hides in the floor pan right there. All right, and then we're going to go like this. Actually, we'll go like Zot. Nice. So this will now be hidden. All right, so... Okay, so you notice how, like I was talking earlier in the video, you want your your wheels just aft of the center of gravity. That will make it easier for you to rotate. So that's why that's there. Linear speed can go for now. What did I delete on the other side? I'm not sure. That can go. All right, good. So let's go ahead and what else are we controlling here? Not much. We're actually pretty good on space. I need uh, something to run panels on. So these are easy to hide. We can hide those. And what we'll do here is I will grab this swing here and we'll make a little cheaty hide spot here. We'll cut that, move that out, paste that. Cut that, move that out, paste that. All right, and this will be filled with blocks, which we then can hide stuff in. So that's all in the um, service of hiding some stuff. All right, good. That will be there. Let's see. Put that like so. All right, that sounds pretty good. Let's see where I want to hide this stuff. So these are going to go on the tail. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to put in an XML block so I can hide all this. So I need to cut this down, and this is going to be our main hiding spot. So these go there. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to count out our tail here after I merge those. And so from here to, let's see, right there, so what's that? That is a 11 long, and so we want it to be an odd number. 11 is perfect. That will work. So we need to count half of that, so that will be 6. So right here is where our block is going to be. So everything else gets deleted except that. So that's our block right there. And we can XML the block in here, and that will cover all this. So all this is hiding space. 
to put our stuff. And so right here we have a one, two, three block. So let's get a three in there and see what we can do next for setting this up. So that's a three. That will go from the engine there. All right. Update that. This now hides in the tail. So we're going to hide this with a little XML. And I'm going to hide things like my altimeters in those wing spots that I created. All right, and then what do we have here? Oh, that looks like a five. Let's make this into a five. We'll name that engine panel three. Five, okay, update that. Cut that and that will go right there. So that's gonna hide in our tail frame like so. All right, good. Next thing we need is we need air, uh, linear speed and altimeter. Those are going to go there. I didn't need to duplicate them, but let's uh, go like this. Altimeter. All the important gauges that we need for our aviation. And I need linear speed. Is that altitude it is? Linear speed. You could use one of the wind speed indicators too, but I'd rather use a linear speed. All right, that's set in there. Perfect. Okay, good. So let's go. This one's a little bit of a pain to use this panel because I really can't take up much info on this one. Um, if I'm passing through there, so maybe I won't make this a pass through. Uh, we'll see what I want to do with that one. Yeah, that one's going to be tough to make a pass through because I need to use up two nodes for something. So that's really not helpful. So this one here is going to be a pass-through, so that's going to be input, pass-through. And this is going to be a, a composite output panel. All right, and so let's stick some things in here we need. So I'm going to try to make as little of this, uh, as much as on the seat as possible. So let's see. Let's go in here. Let's go. One will be beacon. Beacon toggle uh that will be toggle this is going to be nav strobes uh, actually you know what i want to do i want to do flaps so one is going to be flaps uh, up and there's going to be flaps down flaps down that's going to be push, push. Okay, that's going to be there. This is going to go to this panel here. So this one here is going to be flaps. All right, and then what we're going to do is add, um, should be able to add a node on there. So number output flaps. All right, and then we can add another node later that if we uh, need it. Uh, you know what we'll add here? Brakes. So that'll be number output brakes. Sorry, I haven't been in the chat, guys. I'll catch up in a minute. I'm just going to go uh, bathroom real quick, and I'll be back in one sec.
All right, I'm back. Let's quickly, I think I actually am pretty uh, caught up in chat. All right, good. So just a quick little bathroom break there before it exploded. Let's go into here and let's see what we need. So I'm going to quickly prop. Uh, let's see, where's text? Text. Spawn. All right, good. Let's go breaks, flaps, and seat. So flaps is going to be, we just did those, so that's going to be on off. I want one is up, two is down. Okay, there. We want an up down counter, point zero zero one. And let's go enabled to one. And this is going to help us have a lower uh, approach speed, which we desperately will want. Because I, you know, especially it's so wobbly because it's so small with a high center of gravity. Really don't want to worry about um, slamming it. And then what I want for brakes is I generally do the space bar. And so we do another up down counter like this. And that will go there. Space bar is 31, I believe. I think 32 is occupied, 31 is space. All right, and that will go like that, and then what we'll do is a knot. We'll reset it, so they're kind of like progressive breaks. The longer you hold them, and then you let go of them, they let go. So that's how they work in real life. You would push them, push them, push them, push them, push them, and then when you let go, you pretty much have no breaks. So that's helpful. You can like really get into them, or you can let go, and you'll stop breaking. So if we start, uh, they call it um, cartwheeling. Uh, or a ground loop when you ro when you go over forward and you hit your propeller. And so one of the ways is when you let go of the brakes, it, it pretty much lets go of all your brakes. So it's good to do uh, on and then completely shut them off like that. Enable one that brakes. Okay, good. That's nice. So now we're in now we're in high speed mode. I've got uh, everything tuned up. The p value that stuff's kind of monotonous, annoying, but that's done now. So that's good. And then these are brakes. Uh, you just want to do pretty much your mains. You don't want to brake on your nose wheel. Uh, it's a good way to cartwheel. It's a good way to uh, have some issues. Uh, you want to brake on your mains. That's going to that's gonna already force your nose in. You don't want to be braking on this tire, really. So uh, that's good. And then seat has to be hooked in. What is that? Um, flap seat. Okay, that's seat. And then this one here, panel, is actually going to go out here. And then this will go to this panel. This panel will go to this panel. And then this will go to, where are we at? Engine panel. All right. Uh, that's engine. That is seat. Oh, we're going to run out of space there. That's fine. All right. Okay, I forgot. We're just reporting with these panels. That's all going to be reporting stuff. All right. Uh, let's see. What do we need here? Let's go in here. Let's see what I want. Let's get these set up. So I want engine and readouts here. I want my flight stuff on the right. So let's go ahead and uh, temp, temp, dial 0, 120. If we go over 120, we're in the crapper anyway. Uh, RPS, M. <laughs> I can't. My brain, I've gone to RPM for so long. It just, I see it and I know what it's supposed to be. RPM, RPS, it's like I have to do a quick calculation in my head, and if things are hairy, I, my brain farts. Battery, uh, I do a gauge sideways, 0 to 100%. That's going to be 3. Fuel, uh, let's see, we want a gauge vertical, 0 to whatever that's going to be, I don't know. Oh, what are you talking about? A half and a quarter, half and a quarter about. So it's about a half and a quarter off. So if we're talking 62 liters, a half of 62 liters is um, is uh, 30 gallons and a quarter off of that. So we're talking 10% uh, is three times two and a half. So we're talking what's that? Six and six two. Say six two. So we're talking. Let's say we'll go to 68 on that, and then that will be four. This here, get out of the way, you. Uh, I want my airspeed. Airspeed is going to be most important to me. That's going to be a dial zero to, and let's say about, oh, I don't know. We go to 140. Uh, let's go 150. We'll go a little bit above that. That'll be, nope, that'll be five. Oof. 
counting's tough. <laughs> uh, altitude. And it has to be in fate for my brain to work. Dial zero. Zero. And we'll do uh, 15,000 because if you go over 50, you can, uh, without oxygen, you can go up to 15,000 for up to 30 minutes. Of course, it doesn't matter in game, but you go up to 15,000 for uh, 30 minutes uh, uh, without oxygen. Uh, if you go, you can't go over 15,000 without oxygen and you can't stay up there for more than 30 minutes. So usually 10,000, you can stay up there indefinitely. So those are just some aviation thingies. Um, I don't know what I want to put here yet, so we'll leave those. I'll just none them for now. And uh, that will work. All right, good. Let's see. This one here is, let's check all our panels. That one's set. This one is going to be our engine panels. And we're just going to go like that. This will be all of our information on our crapolas for our engine stuff. So we need a bunch of stuff. This is where we start, are going to run into some space concerns. So, yeah, we're already running into some space concerns. That's fine. Uh, we'll do another pass-through panel. So we can do... Uh, input, linear speed, we can do number, input, altitude, and we can do, fuel is going to have to be doubled up, so I'm going to make another panel for fuel. What else do I want? Um, airspeed, altitude, compass is already in. We might be pretty close to not needing any more crap. Let's go number, input, fuel, and I'll put it in here. And then we'll pick up whatever else I put on those panels. So I'm going to have to double up the fuel somewhere anywhere. Be, anyway, um, pass through there. Don't really. Uh, yeah, okay. So we're going to have to pass through from the engine. So let's go to get rid of fuel. I don't need a pass through. What we need really here is engine. All right. So engine here. And let's go, linear speed is going to be function, functions. So this is going to be x times uh, 1.943844 for knots. Altitude is, uh, what is it? Um, uh, meters per feet, 3.28. It's in here. Um, is it? No, it isn't. It's 3.28. I think 3.284, maybe? 3.284? Does anyone know that off the top of the head? Uh, meters to feet? I think it's 3.284. That's there. Uh, let's see. Meters to feet. Meters to feet. Uh, 3.281. Oh, my. I missed it. 3.281. Okay. So that is converted, and then this one here is going to be, I don't know what that's going to be yet, because fuel I need two nodes to be able to add the tanks up, because I have two tanks. Could go down to one tank, that would be interesting. Uh, we might be able to run this, go back to one cylinder. I'm hoping we can go back to one cylinder, I'll have to test it. I, I need to get all the numbers right before I could see, I need enough power to get the hell off the runway. So let's, I'll see if I can go to one uh, cylinder later. Uh, let's start working on this. So we want to write numbers. So I'm missing RPS. So this needs to be RPS. Actually, I need it for temp too. So I need temp and RPS to come off of that. Uh, let's do this. Let's do go back to pass through. Sorry. All right, uh, the reason I'm doing this is if I come off that engine panel, I can take both temperature and I can take RPS without having to add extra nodes. So that's why I'm doing this off of the pass-through. So let's go update this. We need to go to the other panel, and we need to report this information here. So right here, we're reporting this information here. So we're going to change panel to pass-through. And it's just passing through one panel to the other. That's why I call it pass-through. And I'm going to write, uh, not on, off, thank you, no. Let's do, where are we at here? Uh, write numbers. And so one of them is going to be three. And then let's make this, uh, let's just make this four. No, that's, I didn't mean to do that. Let's start at three and let's make that, uh, let's, let's see what I want to do here. 
So it's temp is one, uh, RPS is two. So that's how I had it set up. Where's RPS here? RPS is two, temp is one. You go up there like that. You go to pass through, bingo. That's clean and done, perfect. Uh, this can go away. I don't need that. I don't need you anymore. Good boy, good boy. All right, so that's gonna pass through. This information is gonna go to the next panel. Again, this is where like space savings is kind of key. So pass through will now go up here and we'll get in here. And we should be able to pass that directly through. So one and two are gonna be uh, temp RPS. And then I need to pick up battery. So I need battery in here. So RPS, let's change that to battery. Battery, and I don't mean a salt and battery. You go there, X times 100. That's just for percentage. Uh, one, two, and then we need to start this on uh, three and four. Three, four, and five. Are we on five already? Uh, three, four, and three, four. Okay, so um, three, uh, oh Christ. One and two are going to be the uh, temperature, RPS. That's in there. That's coded in the pass-through. Three is going to be uh, battery. Yeah, battery. Fuel we're going to pick up later. Okay. So fuel we're going to pick up later. Let's just make this um, four is fuel. Five is going to be uh, linear speed. Six is altitude. So we need two more on here. So what did I have it as a two? So I need a four. Okay. So four, skip a, skip a. Uh, so that is three, four, five, and six. That's done. Okay, good. That's done and dusted. That goes to the panel. We need to pick up fuel on a different one because I need to read two tanks on this sucker. So let's uh, let's update this. All right, let's see where I can hide some crap here. Uh, run out of hidey spots, but we do have one. Let's see one. That's not going to hide that too much. All right, trying to find a hiding spot here because I don't want to show any panels. That's kind of my little uh, thing that I want to do here. Under the seat. Uh, this is all taken. Okay. Trying to find a hiding spot where I can hide this without having an issue. It's not the end of the world, but I just don't want to see it. I don't want to see my stuff. Let's try something really quick, too, where we're at. It. Let's go. Zoink, zoink. Zoink, zoink. Let's see if we can go back to one cylinder really quick. If we can, I'm going to go down to one fuel tank. I would love to get this thing down to one cylinder if we can. Let's try to see if I can fly it. See, I lost. A, we need to put some weight in the nose for right now. Just lost a little bit of weight. And that's all it takes. So let's grab a weight block. All right, so two weight blocks right there. That should keep us balanced. And let's go and take a quick little flight, see how we're doing here. What are you doing? Oh, I didn't merge you. Ah, crap. i got to merge it. All right, now let's spawn it. Let's check it. So we need a battery in there. We need electricity. We're going to put a circuit breaker. Flaps. I'm going to start adding uh, just a little bit of flaps in here. So about there, just to the um, just to the kind of the angle of the one by fours. Ah, unfortunately, I think uh, that's going to be too wimpy of an engine to have a one cylinder in there. Too wimpy. All right, just going to be too wimpy. I was hoping. Hoping beyond hope that I could do a one, but I, I don't think I can. The nice thing with modulars is like take me two seconds to rebuild it the way it was. All right. From trying to side, let's cut down to one tank. Okay, one tank there. And then I need to add these back in.
And what I can do is grab all this. All right, so this is our whole cooling apparatus here. And what are you doing here, guy? I don't know what this thing is. It's just a blank. Okay, that's a nope, constant number one. That's Is that going to clutch? That's my clutch. Okay, that's clutch. So that should be hidden somewhere at some point. We'll figure that out later. All right, let's spawn it up. Let's take a flight. Unfortunately, I think we're going to have to run it as a two-cylinder. I really wanted a one-cylinder, but that is a, that's a big propeller. And I think it's just going to be too weak. As soon as we hit a certain speed, you notice the tail gets effectiveness. The control surface will start to work for us, and that's why it jumps like that. Is uh, The game kind of has a hard limit. It's around 60 knots where the control surfaces get their effectiveness. In real life, you're going to get prop wash. You're also going to get... Uh, it's going to be more progressive than that. It still will do that. It will jerk on you once it gets to a certain uh, airspeed. It will, like, the, the nose will just pop up. And the, the tail will also stall. Like, we used to have to let our nose wheel down really quick in the Embraer 145 because your tailplane would stall, and it would come slamming down, and you bang the, the nose wheel really hard, so you had to, like, put it down. Whoa, whoa, don't do it. So that is uh, that's a good way to die is... If you roll past 60 and you try to bank, you're going to go right into the ground like that. That's how people get killed. So that's something, um, or not 60, if you roll past 90, that's a good way to get killed, as you can see. Uh, because what you're doing is more of your force is bringing you down into the ground than is causing you to turn. So you have to be really careful. You need a lot of altitude to be able to do that, or you can quickly get yourself in, into a coffin. All right, so that is where my block is. So let's go ahead and XML a block in here. So we need to count this out. So that's going to be, I forgot the number already. So that is what? 12. Uh, is it 12? Uh, 12, no. 13, 14, 9. That's uh, 11. Oh my God. Can't count today. 11. So let's go ahead and save this. And we're going to make a block. And I will XML this. So let's see if I have a, a block that's 11. I may already. Uh, 13. I have a 13. I don't have a 11. Okay, so we need to make one. So I'm going to go ahead and I will uh, save this as block X11. All right, and we'll go ahead and I will open up the XML here. And we'll go vehicles, block 11. I'll show you guys once I get it there, once it's loaded up. All right, so here it is. We're just going to look here. As you can see, we have all these numbers. It's a square, so I'm going to try the last one, 11, save. And then we'll open the 11, and that's, that's our block. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll grab it. You know, bring the ultralight back in. I really should save a copy of this ultralight here. Let's save one while we're at it. Because if I don't have a backup, that's a good way for me to accidentally save over it and be done. All right, so this now goes right there. And there goes all of our microcontrollers that are an eyesore. And we need to... So one thing we can do is put a helper block on, go like this. And now it's good. So this can be painted. So let's see. I'm going to quickly do a color swap of this nasty gray all over. And we're done there. And we can paint the other stuff, other colors. But that is now covered. So I'm going to go down to one tank. And that's going to give me a one pickup. So let's see where we're at here. What do we need? So we're full on this one. We have altitude, linear speed, battery. Let's hook all that up. So let's get a battery. Let's get the electrical systems in. We're getting close to being done-ish. And so one small battery is all we need. And we're going to look at center of gravity. We want to be a little bit forward maybe. Let's see where I can hide this. So let's go. Uh, what does this weigh? 10. 
Uh, so we're a little bit light if I cut out here, but I think we'll be all right. Let's see. Uh, do I need... No, I don't need to cut that out. Let's just go like this and add it. That will give us more weight. And we'll stick it in the front here. And that will now uh, help us even more with mass. Let's hook up the electricity. So this battery will be plugged into uh, battery. Linear speed will go out to the linear speed sensor here. Linear speed, altimeter will hook to altitude. That's all done. Let's check the pass-through. That goes to panels. This goes there. That's all good. Let's see what else we need here. So we need fuel. Okay, so uh, we got to cut the mass a little bit if I do this, but I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. Let's do a panel under there for... Uh, this sucks. I just need one node. Yeah, that's, I need one node. That's kind of tough. Whatever. Uh, I just need it, so I have to do it if I'm going to do it. So let's grab a blank panel. Okay, grab the blank panel there, dude. Yes, kind of need to do it. Just can't get around it here. So let's go. Um, let's do fuel. This is tough, I, but I'm, I'm uh, yeah, this is tough because I really don't want to have to add this in and ruin things. We could go without fuel for now. Let's go without fuel for now. I'm just kind of, uh, I have to add like three nodes just to put in one node of fuel. So let's go without fuel for right now. I can put in just a dial above it. That will save me some space. Or we can just look at it later. Uh, that goes in there, merge that. All right, so let's see, uh, what else do we need on the ultralight? Let's go ahead and take a flight. I think we're pretty close to being there. Uh, a little bit of design work here, so let's uh, do that. So let's uh, get this designed up how I want it. And then we can put in some weight here. So let's do this, let's delete you, delete you. Uh, delete, delete, and let's add some weight here. Because I need to get that... S uh, let's see if it spawns all right, because I don't want to lower the center of gravity if I can avoid it. Just needs a little bit. Just a little bit. Because that's all weight blocks up there. Let's do this. Let's cut you and you out. Let's go... Uh, I can't do there. Let's look at this side. As I hid my... Let's go like this. Let's grab the altimeter, cut the altimeter, and stick it right here. All right, and then we can cut these two on either side and put weight blocks there. And that should be weight blocks. I'm just going to verify it by grabbing weight blocks. And we'll stick those in the wing. And that is bringing it up and to the front a little bit. Spawn it, check it, see how we balanced. Something fell off. What are you fell off? Okay, the uh, what did I just put in there. All right, good. So that's pretty good. Let's add just a couple. Uh, oh, why didn't you take any weight blocks, huh, guy? I didn't have symmetry on. Why? Okay. So that's uh, fixing our weight up there. So that's bringing it right, right over our pilot's head, which is pretty good. All right. Now, what's our weight at? 470, so we're actually heavier than the other one, which isn't, isn't a bad thing, necessarily. Let's check this, and let's go that, and I don't know. I really would like to change the windshield, but it doesn't like going in there. It, um, yeah. I can't change the windshield the way I want it, so kind of... I don't want this to be too fat, too. I don't know. Does that look too fat to you guys if it's one extra wide? I don't know. Looks a little fat to me if I do that. Let's kind of sculpt down here to give it a little bit of an angle. Let's do that. And then...
that won't be symmetrical and it will bother me so let's go like so and then Yeah, if I'm going to do a long nose on this, I could add some. I could fix the windshield now that I'm adding a longer nose on this. Let's do that, actually. Oh, get out of there, you. So let's go like this. Yeah, just a little bit of sculpting, trying to make this a little less of a box. Yeah, it looked weird like that. Let's see what I, I can't do that on that side, so let's not do that. All right, and so let's fix this windshield. I don't like the windshield the way it is. Well, I'm starting to not like that. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> that looks so hideous. Uh, let's see. And so let's see if I can service this to make it kind of how I want it. See, the problem is this is what I want to do with the windows. I want to take these. And I want to put them on these side pieces here like so. But I can't go back there, so they have to go up one like so. I kind of want to curve this glass to make it a little different than the last one. And then... More window pieces, please, devs. Uh, this might not like the uh, propeller. I don't think this likes the propeller. It's probably going to give me problems with the propeller. So might have to go back to where I was. Nope. There we go. Yeah, I like that curvedness a little bit. It looks really weird in the front here. i got to fix that. We'll fix it and see if I can't get it sculpted the way I want it. Can do an exposed wheel, I think, will look fine. Yeah, I'm thinking like this. I kind of want a little motorcycle looking. That looks pretty good there. I like that. That looks kind of cutesy, cutesy bootsy. Let's cut that and put in that. Yeah, this looks a little bit, that looks a lot better. And then that, I can't do anything on that side, but I could uh, make it asymmetrical on this side. Let's make it asymmetrical. Because I just can't, kind of can't do it with the wheel the way it is. And then we'll go symmetrical here, and I will cut that for one by four pyramid. I think we're starting to get close. We're into aesthetics here. There we go. Kind of looks like a Vespa. Yeah, kind of that Vespa look. And then that needs to be hidden because that is that uh, ugly ass um, microcontroller there. I kind of like the piping on that. That looks good. Yeah, I'm digging on. Digging it, digging it, digging it. Okay, let's try this. Let's try pyramid. Let's see if I like this or I loathe it. Yeah, it's kind of get gross. Yeah, I'm digging that. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and do some painty paint. Um, kind of make this a little bit brighter, maybe, than the last one. With a stripe.
Oh, I forget that color is that. Ugh. Oh, whatever. I can't see it. It's it's hidden in there. That's fine. I'll change these colors up. I'm just putting uh, something in for now, and then I can do a color swap on them when they're in there. I always default to black. I'm trying not to. Let's see. Um, that looks good. I like that. So silver and gold. Silver and gold. Okay, this now is not covered because of... Uh, can I slide the seat forward? I don't think I can. Let me check it. No. It's not going to like it. Okay, that's fine. It's not the worst thing seeing a little bit of exposed something there. I have a bunch of... Sp oh, you know what I can do? Can I do that? Check it. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay, we're in business here. This is what I did in the last one here. So let's grab these. And this is what I want to do. So moving the windows helps. So let's move that up. Push that up like so. And uh, I think we're getting close to this being a dunner. If I need to hide something, I have a hidey hole right there. Bingo. All right, let's paint this dash kind of this color. Actually, my new color that I've been using for all my dashes is, I believe, this. Is that that? No, it's this. That's the new dash color. Kind of a good high contrast, kind of like Airbus-y type of color here. All right, and let's go black on the window segments. It's looking the business, I think. And then this will take over everything that's not. And I just hand paint it instead of doing bucket of nonsense because I will bucket under here, but it uh, paints stuff I don't want to, and then it's I have to. It takes me twice as long to find it, and then I'm like seeing it later, and it's like ugh. I don't want it that color. All right, and the uh, main the main wing is going to stay that color just to hide those weight blocks, pretty much. And I'm going to do white tips. You often have white tips on a lot of the planes because it's a piece of plastic you can rep you can uh, replace. So. Gives me just a little point of, actually, we'll make it this color. There we go. Just a little point of color difference. This has weight blocks in it. I would love to color this a stripe, but I can't because of the weight blocks. But what I can do is put a stripe here. So let's go. I don't want additive. Thank you now. No, I can't color that. But I should be able to color this. This color, and I think that will be good. Ah, it's off center. It just looks weird like that. Let's not do that. Yeah, the stripe looks off center. It looks weird. That looks pretty good, I think, there. Let's go. That's going to be all weight blocks. Can't do that. So good detailing on there, I think. Let's go. Yeah, I think that looks good. Yeah, so that's looking pretty good there. I think we're in pretty good shape here. Let's go and do uh, like that and black wheels. Yeah, so I'm liking that. That's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and see what the hell this is. This is probably the, that's the uh, clutch. Okay, so see this clutch value is one. We're going to go uh, alternator clutch pressure one, and we're going to do fluid pump one. So that's going to go maximum on those. So I'm glad I have the second cylinder now because those are going to be turning all the time. And we have a hidey hole for this now. This is going to go uh, right behind the wheel. So, And I'll actually change this color first before I get in there. And I think we're uh, pretty much done here. I think we're in good shape. Oh, I forgot to take my walk today. Let's go like that. Yeah, let's go just come in here and paint some things black while we're in here. Let's get in there. Uh, I have to color this, this color, just to fix that. Okay. So this is going to go right in here. So let's just paint a couple things black while we're in here. 
Right. And so this here is going right in there. I think we are done, and I can release this to the workshop. We'll do a quick flight, make sure everything is copacetic. You know, there are some gauges left on the panels, but those can be added later if I, if I desire. Let's go ahead, and we will paint the these all green backlights. Make sure all my gauges work before I call it. And we need to do electricity, too. Let's go like this. And we'll paint that this color. This is tough to get that color up right. So I might have to play with that. That's the XML piece, so that's going to want to be gray, but we'll fix that. All right, so this looks pretty good, I think. Check anything else, I think, in here. That's, that uh, came along pretty good. So let's go ahead and do lights really quick. So, and electricity. So, do all my lights together. And let's see, where are we at here for a light? Let's just do spotlight. And they'll go right there. That'll be my landing lights, and we'll do additive of like this to give it a little bit of brightness. Let's go through additives here and do all my lighting. So red, right, wrong. So that means red to the left. I don't have my strobes in here, so um, I'll have to do those later. But uh, green's on the right, white is in the back. I don't have one in there right now, so we can add that later. Not the end of the world, not having uh, proper nav lights, but um, add those on later. And so what did I put on here? I don't have a beacon either. So I could use another microcontroller, but because I only have one boom, I'm kind of running out of microcontroller space. Flaps up and down. Three is going to be, uh, let's see, nav lights. And then four is going to be a landing. Landing lights. Six is start. Okay, five is park brake. Toggle. So five is going to be park brake. And then uh, we'll do the nose wheel on park brake only. And then um, what do we have? So three is going to be nav lights. And four is going to be landing lights. All right. All right, good. Uh, flat, that's all labeled. Let's go do electricity. So that's connected to that. That's there. These will go to the landing lights. All my control surfaces are going to get uh, tied together. I tie everything together in systems. It just I find it it uh, works a little more reliably that way, and they're put to like systems. Okay. So the clutch is not changing. We don't need the clutch connected. The alternator will go directly to the battery. I'm going to do a breaker. Breaker breaker one nine. And that will go, where do I want that? Right here, I think. Can I put it right there behind the seat? I should be able to, oh, what's that? Oh, that's a one by four. Ugh. That's kind of gross. Uh, let's see. Go right there. Are these weight blocks? Let me color this really quick, see if it's a weight block. Why can't I, oh, I'm on additive. Yep, that's a weight block, okay. Just probably cut the other side too. Make it even. Okay. And then I'll put a breaker on here. This will be the power breaker. This is so we don't run the battery down when we're not operating. And then I'm just going to put a regular block in there. Let's see what our weight is at. We're actually heavier than the other one because that one had more XML pieces in it to make it lighter. All right. So let's go. Battery goes to one side of the breaker. And then we go... Uh, our control surface, we go there. We want to go to one of the lights. 
And then uh, the starter goes to the other side of the breaker, and I think we're good. Let's give it a quick look. Now, one more thing is when we occupy the seat. Uh, seat occupy, we'll turn on the backlights. All right, so let's go for a quick flight. All right, I'm sorry, uh, adding just a little bit of flap for takeoff. So we get that little shimmer from the XML there, but it's not too bad. So, it you know, it was nice to get a little bit different design than the other ultralight. You know, this makes me want to use it. You know, if I had this exact same design, you know, you'd kind of be boring to use both of them. So this one is actually probably should perform a little bit better because this one's supercharged, the other one isn't. I was hoping to make this a one-cylinder, but I just can't get enough power out of it. Um... Yeah, that might be something I could do. So my throttle seems, uh, p-value might be a little bit on the high side. I might have to dump the p-value down a little bit. But let's go ahead and take off. I like the new windshield better. It's a little bit different. Uh, I have my gauges set up the way I want them. Uh, temp is good. RPM is reading out nicely. Battery, fuel. I need to hook up a fuel. Airspeed is set and alt uh, altimeter is good. Let's go. And here we go, rotation. Yeah, positive rate. There we go. Now we'll go flaps up. Flaps are all the way up. Let's go ahead and trim. So a little bit, uh, probably too much aileron again. Let's do a landing here. So flying nicely, hands are off, as you can see. All I did was a tiny bit of trim, as you can see, to overcome some of that uh, propeller pitch. And that was it. So a little bit more aileron than I like. So we're going to go ahead and dump the flaps all the way in. So let's go. Uh, oh, there's an oil spill right there. See it? It's one of the oil spills. So we're going to start putting flaps in. Here come the flaps. And so the flaps are going to give us drag. They're going to also give us lift. This one I didn't put in integrated uh, rudder. So we don't, we have to, ooh, whoa, 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 what's going on there, guy? It's not liking the flaps. I think I got slow. I bet I got slow. Let's see what's up. I think I got a little bit slow. When I did that uh, roll, it didn't like the uh, roll. Let's uh, fix that. I want to get this flying before I release it to the workshop and end it. So let's go to, a, I don't know, a two. We have a lot of uh, aileron there, so I don't need too much. And uh, I think my p-value is a little bit high, so let's check that. Let's go down to 1.2. All right, let's try it now. It was overreactive on the thrust, which is not great. And I'll put down a little bit of flap for takeoff. Actually, I don't want it. Let's do a, a flap zero takeoff. Probably shouldn't need flap for takeoff. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll get kind of set up on the runway here. I keep pressing the wrong key. There we go. And so notice the speed needle. We wanted about 50% will give us enough to take off. So I have this set up so that about 50% on the uh, right here is going to be where we want to approach. So this one likes to roll a little bit more than the other one I had. Let's get this set up here, a little bit of pitch trim. All right, and we'll come back in for a landing here in a second. A little bit of trim there. You can see there's another oil spot there. A bunch of oil spills. I have not made a new save yet, so this is my old save. So 
So I'm going to try not to fly like a crazy person. Okay, I don't have enough aileron control right now, so I, I overdid it. I, I decreased the uh, aileron, so I have very little roll. There we go. It's not too bad. It's, um... Yeah, see, it, it's rolling for me. I need to uh, fix that, so... Right, let's start putting some flap in here. Yeah, it's starting to... I need to put in more. I'm not going to be able to control it with this, that little of an aileron. Up, up it a little bit. I really don't want to make a gyro or anything for it, so I need to kind of tune it in. Let's try a 10% there. All right, we'll do a quick little flight. Hopefully it's good. I will release it. Uh, not right now. We'll, I'll get it. Uh, I'll do the last couple things and get that fixed in. We're pretty good, though, where we are. Fuel, I need to add fuel. I need to index that gauge. So as soon as the needle hits about halfway, that's when we're going to take off. There we go. Perfect. Up. So I have a little bit more uh, roll control now. It's going to be a little bit uh, over rolly because I have those huge ailerons on there. I could try to just control the centers, but I um, kind of need those for flaps. Let's scoop a little bit of trim in there. You know, the plane will torque because of the propeller. I'm trying to rotate around the propeller. So this one's a little bit more twitchy than my other one. You know, the other one was a little bit more stable, I think, because it had the twin booms. But this still flies pretty well. It's a little bit twitchy in the roll, but it's not bad. Especially not bad for having no gyro in there. Kind of neat to have it a little bit different with, uh, you know, with this having a polar prop instead of a push prop. Let's start adding in some flap. This one definitely is a little bit rolly. So I need to check, make sure the flow is good on the on the um, cooling. I had no problem on the last one with uh, cooling. All right, so we I'm trying to get full flap in there. It looks like full flap is in there. So my speed, the minimum speed I want to go is about straight up and down. All right, so see straight up and down. That's as slow as I want to go. My throttle is a little bit over responsive. So we're down to about 85 knots, so pretty good approach speed here. Let's turn on, oh, I, I have an infant electricity on. Let's turn off infant electricity. Now let's see where we're running. So we should be running, see 100% electric, so that one alternator is doing fine, keeping us. What I could do is check the, I could check the alternator setting and see what I need at full throttle. Get me back a little bit of engine power, but we're doing fine for power. Start cutting back my thrust a little bit. And I'm going to keep that needle about vertical. I don't want to go too much slower than that. I think I have it set to 150, so that 75 is in the middle, as you can see. That's probably about as slow as I want to get. Yeah, ship's engine would be uh, good at some point. They're pretty simple. I have uh, some tutorials, but it would be nice to get a uh, uh, new one. I always like to try to update my tutorials. Because, uh, you know, that way people know they're the most up-to-date and I get better at making them. All right, so we're coming in here, as you can see, about 73 knots. So pretty good slow speed here, as you can see. Flying really well. So that's all due to the flaps. The flaps are helping us get nice and slow. Also, that little bit of pitch on the propeller is helping us uh, operate slowly like this. But it, coming in about 76 knots is nice. So let's turn on four for landing lights. Landing lights are on. You'll see them, them beaming below us. So I'm aiming at those two big squares. Those are my aiming bars. I'm getting a little slow. I'm watching that needle. All I need to know is that needle needs to be straight up and down. And there we go. Little flare, gentle flare. Up, 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 up. A little bit crazy. Not too bad. Let's start coming off the power. And we can taxi back. So, you know, 
this is a challenging aircraft. One of the reasons why, you know, I spent most of the video, or the live stream here, which will be a video, uh, I spent most of the live stream trying to tweak the value of the pitch trim, uh, the pitch on the propeller. And the reason was, this thing is so light, it takes me a long time to figure it out. I have to get it precise, because this, this whole plane weighs 407, something like that, maybe 410 weight. This thing is so light that having that engine high up on the wing is very challenging to get balanced correctly. If the plane weighed more, that engine has to t torque the entire weight of the plane. This thing weighs almost nothing. And so that was very challenging to get that right. One of the reasons I also have some wide wheels here is because it's likely to, you know, roll more. So that's why it took so long to kind of get that tweaked. You know, other planes that I put some pitch on, the engines, say for example the Seagull, that was a piece of cake. The Seagull weighs so much that it doesn't torque it as much. Even though the engine's more powerful, the mass of the airplane, the the propeller can't really turn it all that much. This thing weighs almost nothing. So, um, but this is fun. This is kind of this was cool to get. Um, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Kind of going through this. I will fix up the last couple things and release it on the workshop when I'm done. You guys can have it. Uh, you know, I'd like to do some more of these live builds. You know, the, one of the reasons I don't is that whole testing phase. You saw how, like, it was a pain just going through and be like, add a little bit on that. Nope, crash. Do it over again. I don't mind doing it. It's, uh, you know, I don't know how interesting it is to you guys to kind of watch me pull my hair out trying to figure out the, the right value for that. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. This was fun getting into, uh, you know, uh, Dark Side Dripper asked to do this, so I hope you enjoyed it as well. So hope you guys enjoyed that. I will go ahead and put this on the workshop at some point, and you guys can enjoy that. So I think we're going to end there. Uh, thank you guys for joining. I enjoyed uh, hanging out with you guys, and we'll see you in the next one.